There's a picture somebody did with her holding her up like this, and somebody put the blanket around her and put the Mandalorian helmet on my head. Yeah, it's just, she does. They superimposed me, yeah. She does. She's Baby Yoda, right? You're Baby Yoda. Scoot doo. Blabbery blue. Scoot dee. Oh, yeah. All right, let's do a little test. Okay. Hey, thanks for coming over. Thanks for having me over. It's nice to meet you. Thanks. Um, I, was, I wanted to shave. I, I'm filming a show. I just finished filming a show, and I have to be clean shaven, which I never am. Yeah. So I took it upon myself to grow a little bit extra of a beard, Great. and yeah. I'm not feeling good about it. It works. I think it works for you. Yeah, you're the guy. You're the guy that says that. Looks to guys. like you don't give a shit. Yeah, which is a good look. Yeah, I care a lot. <laughs> and Betty said it's good because it makes us look related. There, very much. And um, I feel uncomfortable now because I'm forcing a joke. But Betty said I should say this on here, and now I'm nervous about it because it doesn't feel organic. Right. But I said I, I look like the thing that you wipe off the side of your mouth. <laughs> my that's my version of it. The facial hair is that what you're saying? Yeah, like like. Uh, you and I, I, we did some research, and you were a big Schwarzenegger fan. Well, yeah, sure. I grew up, I mean, my wall was, it, all, it was literally Schwarzenegger wallpaper. Yeah. It was just Schwarzenegger wallpaper. Yeah. And I feel like if we were both modeled by Schwarzenegger, you would be Arnold and I would be DeVito. No, get out of here. I don't, what I, are you talking about? I don't about? feel like an How ugly man. How tall are you? 6'3". Exactly. Thanks. Yeah, I on. could still dunk. Can you? Woo! <laughs> Rick, I feel like this is one of the easier ads for you to do because you are such a proponent of therapy. Is proponent a word? Uh, I'll ask my therapist about it next week. Okay. Yeah, I love therapy, obviously. And I truly believe that it is for everybody. 10 out of 10 people can benefit from going to therapy. And I want you to start living a happier life today. And you gals and guys can get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash Tyso. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso for 10% off your first month. Look... Listen. Okay. You have my attention. I could see there's something serious going on with you right now. Take the lead. There didn't used to be this kind of technology or these kind of pharmaceuticals that where you could stop your hair from falling out. Sure. And now you have them. I think why not utilize them? This isn't for everybody, but if you're interested in keeping that mop up top and prevent your hair loss, go to keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tyso for your first month of treatment free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tyso to get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tyso. See, Bring I'm, this a little closer. See, I'm, see, I'm 44. So I haven't, I haven't gone out and tried to dunk in a while. Right. But uh, we're in the process of moving and there is a basketball hoop at the new house. Uh, what kind of hoop? So I'm going to, there's like a little mini half court. Yeah. And so I'm going to be out there. Lights? When, yeah, lights, night lights. So there could be some competitive situations happening in the backyard from here on out. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I haven't gotten up and, and tried to dunk. That's the, I'm in the Achilles tendon ah. phase of life. I know you were an athlete in high school. Is that why you didn't go? I assume people like you, yeah. anybody who's a professional actor uh -huh. uh, and says they used to do athletes, I feel like the only reason they weren't a pro athlete is because something happened. Not necessarily. Uh, uh, for me, I'll say this. You know, it would be great if I had that story that like, oh, you know, I, yeah, you know, I was, I was playing D1 football and yeah. this happened and I fell into theater or something. But I was always an artist from the time I was a kid. I was always into painting, drawing, reading, writing characters. I got into like tabletop role playing games when I was younger and ran the games, which <clears throat> I didn't realize was a showrunner job. You were practicing yeah. to be a showrunner sure. when you were 9, 10, 11 years old, 16 years old. So um, I was going to go to college to play basketball. Basketball was your number one? Because you played football and volleyball too, right? I did, yes. You've done your homework. Um, basketball was number one. I was going to go to college and play basketball. I was set up. Uh, I was going to go study criminal justice and go into federal law enforcement. That was my dream. Instead, you are on CSI. <laughs> it would be like that's <laughs> right. what it would be. Yeah, funny. Um, I, uh, I, actually, yeah, I actually got... Um, asked if I wanted to move to Europe last week for one of those big crime shows. Which but one? I, 
uh, I don't want to say. I just want to speak cryptically about it because sure. I'm I'm not I'm not going to move to Europe to do it. So, but what, are you nay saying it if you said what it was? Um, it, it was Dick Wolf related. The Chicago Europe, Europe version. So you should yes, sure. <laughs> Chicago yeah, Europe, yeah. Chicago Hungary. Um, but uh, but that would have been a dream role for me. It would have been something that um, that I absolutely I would have loved doing. Like, and any time I get to do anything cop related, law and order yeah. related, or even military related, it's kind of like what I wanted to do prior to acting or, is, or choosing to do. Is acting. that because like? The superheroes, I mean, I'm for myself, I, I'm all to speak for everybody else, but myself, yeah, the top of the is you know, you're is a superhero, and then below that is like a, 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 a Navy SEAL, like you know, a human version of that. Oh, you mean like, like, like not talking about acting roles, like talking about like when you're a kid, you want to be you want to be Batman, and then if you can't be Batman, you want to be. A Navy SEAL, a Navy SEAL, <laughs> yeah, a dinosaur yeah. or a SEAL, sure. but yeah, but even as like, like, I. What would I would I want to be a superhero because I want I have so many injuries and uh -huh. so many I have so many surgeries and arthritis and really? I'm just a Jewish body. <laughs> and if I had if I had a show or a movie that said, Rick, we need to get you don't know. I used to I was cool looking. Well, you still you look cool to me. What Thank you, you. Yeah, what, I want. I, I'm feeling myself want, wanting you to know. I used to, <laughs> but I want. I want to have a job where they could train me to be a Navy SEAL, or sure. you know, and, and I have the people to help. Well, that's one of the amazing things about being an actor. I mean, that's one of the the most attractive things to me about being an actor is the access that you get to yeah. unbelievably high level people in whatever field it is. If you come to anyone who is an expert in a field with the Hey, I'm an actor and I'm going to play this role. Could I hang out with you and ask you some questions or take you out to dinner? The answer 100% of the time is yes. What did you do for Magic Mike? Also, I want to preemptively, I don't want to apologize, but I want to acknowledge. Yeah. You've done a lot of interviews and there's a, I'm sure there's a lot of hot button things that you talk about all the time. And I don't want to make you have to like do sound bites, but I'm genuinely interested in that. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, well, yeah, we'll see. Um, well, we, we'll, we'll cross the hot buttons when we get to them, I guess. Well, I just, because I, uh, I, I was on a show where, yeah. uh, I wanted to dance on it. My mom has been telling me <laughs> uh -huh. you need to do dancing more on stage. Yeah. So I made a fake magic mic audition tape, uh, to show the <laughs> okay. showrunners sure. and, uh, people thought it was real and I want, I, I, maybe I'll put it on this, but I don't have rights to the music, but there was, uh, I felt I felt I was doing something funny because, you know, I'm, I'm not. Listen, male dancing is inherently funny. But people thought, I, the comments I was getting yeah. were like, comments I don't get about like, ooh, that's sexy or hot or uh -huh. just because it's moving. Well, listen, man, you're doing a mating ritual. You know, you're, you're, you're dancing for what? What is the purpose of this? To have females have a, or whoever, males maybe, have an opinion about, yeah. Your, 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 this, this dance that you're doing. I mean, it's a mating ritual. I mean, at its essence. The, the, the reason I'm wanting to make these connections are because mm -hmm. I know you're big into D&D. &D, mm -hmm. And uh, you have a, a kind of this, um, like this, you know, these two different sides of you. And I was, I'm, do you know Magic the Gathering? Sure. I'm, I still am a huge Magic the Gathering player. Yeah, there's a show called Spell Slingers that I went on to, you play magic against the host. You play magic, and I won. You play magic, and so I'm actually in the on the way over there. I saw emails popping up that there's a conversation about getting me in to test out the new D and D, D, &D magic crossover deck uh, to do a play a commander game on film. So Comes out on my birthday. I pre-ordered it yesterday. It, I've seen the deck, and they're amazing. It's amazing. Oh, that's awesome. They're awesome. What what would that entail? What is uh, by the way? Two either last week or two weeks ago. By the time this came out. Mm -hmm. um, there's a big magic YouTube channel. His name's The Professor. I, mm. uh, I became a fan of him over quarantine. I had him over and we just had a huge magic oh, really? conversation. Uh, I just want to, in case you haven't seen it, check that out. But what is a beta test? Uh, what does that mean? What do you, how are you beta testing cards? Playing against whom? Well, no, no, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on there. We're going to play Commander against each other on film to add, to kind of like roll out the new cards. Right? So um, where do people, where would I see that? I don't know yet. We had, we still have to figure it all That's out. Cool. I just got an incoming email about it, so we'll figure it out. But yeah, so I do play, and I have played. What what was it like being a kid in D and D? Were you 
you know, did you have D&D friends? Were you, it was hard for me. What was it like for you? Yeah, I had different groups of friends for different things, you know, um, like we talked about the athlete side, uh, which, which mind you, I did not get injured and wind up in the arts. I wound up in the arts because I made movies as a kid growing up. Like I would write, direct, produce and write parts for all my friends. And I had friends of mine who were black belts in martial arts and I would get them to choreograph and I would lay down soundtracks. Like I was in the editing room. What always. were you filming on? Like VHS. I mean, we were filming on whatever we could get our hands on, right. which, you know, what our parents had or what the TV lab at my high school had a TV studio with teleprompters and cameras you could borrow on the weekend. So I was taking and how do you edit with that? Do you have to do stop, start, stop, start? Yeah, it was it was all, you know, the analog machines before, prior to editing on a computer. So you had to line up your tapes. You had these tapes and you had to put the tapes and you had your master yeah. tape and then you had your Vine. Your, I don't know if you ever used tape. Vine, but it was kind of the same thing where you you had a did you ever use Vine? No. You know what Vine is? Sure. It was only six seconds, but you, you, like if I wanted to record a back and forth where you yeah. would do you, then me, and if you messed up, you have to start over. It's just like... Oh my God. Yeah. Well, it's, it's you know, it, it was all like, you know, like I said, it was all analog. So, you know, I, I was doing all of this creatively and what it takes to, what it takes to be a D1 athlete, what it takes to pursue a professional career in athletics is, um, you know, there was a kid in like a couple towns over from me growing up that went got a scholarship to North Carolina for basketball which at the time was you know it was right after Michael Jordan this was like a big deal you know for a kid from our neighborhood of course. To, to go around around where we lived from uh lived at and um you know he had a phone a portable phone that like or not even portable back in the day it would have been a wire coming out of the wall all the way out to the backyard next to the basketball hoop and that's where the phone was because he was out there all day, every day shooting hoops. And that's what it took to go to North Carolina. And you're saying your time was put into... I'm saying that like I wasn't willing to do that. That yeah. wasn't something that I saw as the basket I wanted to put all of my eggs in. So what I, you know, I, I, was, I was an artist. I knew it. And I knew that if I didn't feed that in some way, then I was going to regret it for the rest of my life because that's where my passion was. And so, um, you know, after making all these films, my friends my friends kind of egged me into trying out for the theater club, In which, school. yeah, which I was like, not, I did not think that was cool. <laughs> you know, being a jock, like I just, that was too daunting. I think of a jump. Um, but what happened was, um, the high school theater teacher asked me to try out for the musical. I was like, please, you know, you sing? there's this role. Well, I did sing for in the musical and I have sung since. I mean, I'm not a musical theater major, so I never competed and did eight shows a week. Mm -hmm. and, you know, um, I, I went to school for straight acting, but um, but this teacher urged me to do that and gave me the part. Um, we actually, I hate to interrupt, but we have a clip of you as a kid singing. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll cut to. <laughs> The misty mountains cold. And we're back. You have a beautiful voice. Thank and you. And deep as shit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, uh, I work on it. And you went to Carnegie Mellon for acting. For acting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What is... What is... Because I, I did theater and in, in, I did marketing and theater, but I didn't go to a school that specializes in that. I was just... Right. I mean, like, I still follow some of the my, my teachers that were... I mean, it was just they're just people. What does going to school for acting mean? I know that's a weird question, but like, well, usually there's, well, you, and you didn't do this, but you know, people put that, that twist on it. Like what is going to school for acting mean? You know, it usually comes out of their mouth like that. I mean, oh, I hope that didn't come across. No, judgmental. I'm saying, I'm saying you didn't, but usually that question has, you know, because it's like people just don't understand. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, what the you know, fuck they, you well, doing? they just think like you could take somebody off the street, hand them a script and film and then they're going to be fine. And they don't, I don't think they get, you know, um, you know, whatever the, the thousand, several thousand year old tradition of drama in Western yeah. culture and where that comes from and all the stories and, you know, things like sitcom where the, all the sitcom characters are these stock characters that are hundreds of years old and they come from other art forms and understanding how they've evolved over time. And if you I don't know this theory, uh, I do have my own where there's, uh, I have a theory where there's only eight jokes and there's only so many stories, and they're all an incarnation of it. Right. But uh, coming from different theories of things, could you give an example of multicam well, characters? Well, so like the Italians had, um, they had these like basically like hay bale carts that they would roll up into towns with, and they would perform shows. And the shows had these familiar stock characters, the archetypes. So there was like the, you know like the horny, greedy old man, um, or you've got, um, you know, you've got the kind of the the lead actor. 
uh, who's kind of your everyman, right? Um, uh, who is like the audience's window into the world, and then you have his big buddy, who eats a lot, uh-huh. or you know. And so when you apply those to, for example, like look at Seinfeld. Seinfeld is Harlequino, right. which is the everyman, and then you Elaine have, is the horny old man. <laughs> well, you have you have uh, you know you have George's dad. You know that that's a time old tradition of how you play an old man. Um, and then you've got um, you've got Kramer. Kramer's the big friend who's yeah. like the goofy guy who loves indulging, and these are all classic characters from those from you know the Commedia dell'arte, which was uh, the Commedia Italians. dell'arte. We'll put their Instagram handle up here. There you go. Yeah, I played the horny old man in, in the multi cam I was on, and I was so <laughs> uncomfortable. I was so uncomfortable because in today's world, sure, that's a tough character. To play. Well, actually, I don't know. Maybe. It was it was old enough. It was 2014, so for yeah. whatever that means, it feels like it was it was today's world ish. <laughs> but it was just all I was talking about was boobs and farts, right? And I didn't know how to make that funny. Oh, and cut to a few years later, I'm doing this where literally my promo code, by the way, rickglassman.com, promo code boobs for 10% off my merch. All I do is boobs and farts and poops. And I think there's something I, uh, interesting. I'm doing a drama. I've never done a drama before. Yeah. Okay. And on this drama, I am have, I have there's so many funny things I want to do. And it feels like I, I, I'm not good enough yet, but I have enough of an instinct to know this isn't what you're supposed to do. Uh-huh. But I learned that I learned how to do a multicam by being on a drama, if that makes sense. Hmm. Like being on a multi, I'm very, uh, I was very judgmental on the multicam I was on. These jokes are cheap. I didn't understand my role, uh-huh. right? Like I was this, literally the sixth lead on the show. I didn't have a lot of lines. I was, my best friends were on it and I didn't know how to do these jokes. But being on this drama, I learned, does that make sense? It does. Yeah. I mean, well, what you're also saying and alluding to is the fact that multicam is its own style. It's its own style the way that musical is a style. You know, musical is not realistic. You know, people don't mm-hmm. just like walk down the street and just bust in the song. That's what I didn't understand in the moment. It's and a mul- genre. Multicam has its own kind of rules. And like I'm saying, like if you can find the one character, the one like what you're funny at. If yeah. you're, you know, Jack Black he like he's jack black yeah. he's a shade of jack black and everything com- comedically like he's a jack uh, shade of black <laughs> yeah 50 shades of jack jack black black um and then you know will ferrell will ferrell you know or or chris farley and rob riggle um you know um uh patrick warburton mm-hmm. they're kind of they're them i feel like comedy. you went in order too almost we, of like <laughs> of height yeah yeah, you know, yeah yeah brad garrett no, God, yeah <laughs> Um, and, and so if you, if you kind of, if you crack that where you fit in, in that, in that ensemble, you can work forever. So what, what I realized was that late, that multicam by design is two layers. You have your characters, you have your situations, and then it's just a play being on a, does that make sense? Sure. Being on the drama, there's, you know, the story that's different. Well, and drama can be messy and sloppy, um, where Comedy has to be very crisp. It has to. You have to be on top of it. I, I don't think so. It's got to be very sharp. I think comedy could be very messy. I've gotten into huge argument, not arguments, but I mean, I've I've seen writers, showrunners, like in in massive debates with people whether it you know they improv that they said on. Oh, something it, just shut off. Did he? Okay. How are you, by the way? Is everything all right? Great. I feel like I'm doing a master class right now, but yeah. I very much like this type of conversation, and I'm feeling myself getting excited. But you know, is this is this something you're into talking? It's or great. You diverge. No, I mean, I'm uh, I'm like uh, I'm like I'm playing jazz, man. You know what I mean? I'm just I don't know where we're gonna go with this, bro. But uh, lift your lift this, go like this. We're just uh, are you is you gonna do a fart noise? You are. When I, <laughs> you son of a gun. Welcome to take your shoes off. You, I didn't do it. You did it. That wasn't me. And it's all over the couch, Joe. Come on, man. It, was, it wasn't me. It was the dog. No, right. I'm kidding. I wouldn't do that. Um, so we're talking about uh, how you were saying. Well, we were talking about, like, of- I've seen, like, you know, you know, there's. Okay, when you come from theater, you don't change lines. You don't come in. You don't get cast in streetcar. And you say to yourself, you know what? 
I want to I want to say this differently. That's why I would get fired because I would I would make some choices. Unless you're Brando, but you also had Tennessee Williams in the audience and Ilya Ilya Kazan, so that there's a whole different story. But I mean, like you know, in today's you can't um you can't improv Richard the Third. You can't improv Shakespeare. You can't do these things. In the same way, sitcom is TV sitcom is metered. The words have been combed over, mm-hmm. whether it's if or, you know, whether the word is on or in. I did, what's funnier, I did, um, argue over that stuff. I did uh, uh, a couple Intel commercials with Jim Parsons. This won't happen in the future. Thanks, Jim. Mm-hmm. And we were doing, we were improvising on set because yeah. the commercial allowed for it. And we were talking about improv and he doesn't like improvisation. He doesn't do it. He doesn't feel he's good at it. And he said that Chuck Lorre, you're not even allowed to change where there's, if there's a comma, it has to be in there. Correct. And I understand that. Yes. That's a skill set that is very, you know, you have, to, like you were saying, I don't think you could pick up somebody off of the street and have them be present while still having every comma. Well, and that's theater. I mean, theater, mm-hmm. your job is here's the script. Oh, you don't understand why he says the line that, why your character says the line that way. Go figure it out. Mm-hmm. You can't change it. Where in film, you can have those conversations. You, Why? You, well, I think that the medium... Well, number one, a play is set in stone. It's set in stone. Yeah, but somebody... Just, I agree. But somebody just decided that. A movie could be set in stone. There are movies where you have to do it this way. Well, but a movie doesn't necessarily have to abide by a certain amount of time in the way that a TV sitcom does. Right. They have a certain amount of time and then they go to... Like each page... Well, could we could, moving could, through it? Could, you have to move through it at a certain time so they can hit commercial break, and it's all. Could so we equate it no to a drama kind of show movie. instead of a movie, where at least they both have twenty two x minutes? Um, sort of, but I just think that drama is much sloppier. You can be sloppy, and you are rewarded for being sloppy in drama, like because it makes it's because it's a choice. What do you, what does that mean? Because I it kind of makes sense because I felt like I could be sloppier. And it I felt I think that human beings like comedy. Like to land a joke the way, like look at any comedian, like comedians, like really great comedians are also amazing writers and their work, especially like in a standup routine, the way you deliver a joke to an audience, there's like an infinite amount of ways to deliver that joke, but there's one way that you're going to get the maximum amount of laughs and it becomes a science of how to figure that out. And I think that the people, especially the sitcom actors that I've been on sets with, like whether that was, you know, Brad Garrett or Jolie Fisher, or, you know, like they're geniuses at understanding why this thing is funny to an audience. You know, saying the word, you know, I won't stand for the charade. If you change it to, I won't stand for the charade. All of a sudden, the character is Paul different, and, and it's a whole different situation. Yeah. Could I try yeah, I a couple that, ways, and will you tell me which one you think is the funniest? Let's do it. All right. What's the lead in? Will you lead me in? Uh, 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 you, what do you want? You just want me to give you like a line? I'm not going to stand like, for this charade. Okay. Well, uh, what's wrong with you? Wait, am I? Wait, am I'm I, giving. Are, you- are we still going, or am I? Am I trying the line over again? Because you gave me a different. Lead well, I was going to give you the yeah. Okay. I'm not say, and, and, and I'm happy to have you here, and this is yeah. fun. But like, there's a certain game I want to play, and I'm not going to stand for the charade, man. I like the second one. You put a little. You put a little zhuzh on it. I think. Could you say zhuzh anymore? I just did. And that's the difference. Now, a question for you. Yeah. On stage, play. Tennessee Williams is in the audience. He's wearing. Take your shoes off merch. I can't believe he even heard of my podcast, let alone he's still around to wear it. I hear he's a big fan. Appreciate that. And I add the word man. Even though you would say I like that better because yeah. there was zhuzh, could you not add zhuzh on a play? Like in a Tennessee Williams play? Where, where, would the, where, where could you throw a zhuzh? Well, where is, where is the line on stage, on the boards? We're talking, we're talking like Broadway, baby. Yeah. Where is the line? Here's, here's zhuzh. Yes. No zhuzh. Fun zhuzh. Here, I'll give you an example where you might be able to throw zhuzh in. Uh, so in Shakespeare, all of it's written in iambic pentameter, which are 10 syllables. We know. Right? And there are some lines in his plays that are nine syllables or eight syllables. Intentionally for the deconstruction. Where it is sometimes customary to throw in a sound where you would say something to the king on a nine syllable sentence, and at the end of it, you would say, ha! 
You could throw in a ha to, to even out the pentameter. You could throw in a zhuzh. How are you doing today, sir, good man? <laughs> like, <laughs> to give it a tenth? You could do that. How are you doing today, sir? Nah, fuck. But you know what I mean. But why? What, what is that? Is that is that just like uh, out of respect or does it help the pacing? Uh, it's just one of those optional, if you want to, you can. I'm going to ask a hard hitting question and I'm going to get a lot of slack for this. Uh -huh. I could read in the comments now, Rick's not an artist. Rick's a fucking Jew loser prick. I get it. I get this all the time. Do you get that? Oh, people are oh just, my God. Yeah, I time. know they are. They're, no, I know. I hate that they're, they're just sitting behind their computers anonymously. Throw, you know what I mean? It makes me nuts. I look at people behind computers in the same way where I look at people in a car. Where like, yeah. you can't see my face. Like if you cut me off, I can't see your face. So fuck you. Fuck this guy. But if it were in person, it wouldn't happen. But what I have found is that do you get road rage. Who doesn't? There's a couple guys, but it's neither here nor there, and they're very boring. But the reason I bring it up is when somebody cuts me off and waves, yeah, it all goes away. Do you notice? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yes, I do, and that's uh, feels like you disagree with me. No, I, well, I thought you were going to say that they were waving, and it made me even crazier because I know that they're trying to do that as like a like a fuck you deep. I understand. Very traumatic. You, so you feel people are maybe manipulating you. <clears throat> like that is an extension of their anger. You know what I'm saying? Like rather than give me the finger, which, you know, would be bad. It's like they're going to wave and smile, which is even worse. May I make a connection? Sure. When people say to you, what are you doing at drama school? Like you're, it seems like you're used to hearing <laughs> a wave that has undertones to it. I'm used which to, I don't I, feel. I am used to people being... Uh, oblivious to the idea that an actor is also an artist. You know, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've met a director and I said, yeah, you know, they said, did you read the script? And I said, yeah, I know. I, I read it twice. And they're like, wow, you read it? And it's like, do you meet with a lot of actors about roles that they, they come in and don't read this and the, read the script? And they say, you have no idea. Why do you think? Like, what? So you just, you get a bad name because I think you get lumped in Who's with. You? A person or an actor? Actors. Because you're Act lumped in with... You're just... It's just, you know, there's no respect. I mean, generally given unless it's, you know, you, you have to really, I think, um, what you have to do to earn that respect, I, I don't even know. You have to just get in front of people and have people that are, that know what they're doing, like validate you. Otherwise, you're That's just lumped into this category of like, you know, I think just... Look... You don't need a drama degree to succeed in this. You don't need to have studied anything. You can fit the part and boom, mm -hmm. you're in. Um, or tick a box and boom, you're in. So, you know, it, it, it's... Um, I just think that there's, you know, there is a general disrespect, even from people that I really respect and love. Um, just talk about actors like it's the lowest form of life. Do you think there's something to... And, and I'm not projecting anything. I'm just... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm seeing, I understand what you're saying and I don't share that point of view. We're at different points in our career and I haven't experienced things you have. No, but you seem like you're in, you know, you're an intelligent person who has respect for the arts or, you know, even like people in England, like it's viewed as a trade, like an honorable profession yeah. that people who go into this should be respected and, and it's treated as a job and, you know, workers among workers and things like that. But in, in, a, in the United States, when people say, what did you do at drama school? Like memorize lines all day? And you're like, oh God. But do you okay, feel there's something to you being a hot guy, respectfully, where you think that people are cr giving you credit for that and not for this other thing that you worked so hard for and are now good we're at? Now we're doubling back to, now we're building the bridge back to the Magic Mike conversation that we abandoned earlier. Yes. Um, I think that, you know, oh man, um, I don't know what's like the best way into this. I, no, I, I th yeah, I, I think that people want to put you. <laughs> Lights go, music. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just saying, when I was 17. <laughs> this is where I walk to the front of the stage on a spotlight and start singing Dude, about my were, troubles. If this life. were a live show, I very much, I'm all over the place, but let me get this out because I want to and you know, you do what you want. I have, uh, I'm going to start doing live live shows with this because I do yeah. stand up. Yeah. And one of my one of the, the devices I'm going to have is because I have a lot of comedians on sure. and they go on their things uh, where I want to have just a stand up mic mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. where if they feel they're in the pocket, they could stand up at any time. The other person quiets down, spotlight, and just rant. And then they could do their bit or their musical number or whatever. Yeah. And then they sit back down. It's a you know, it's a fourth wall break monologue basically, but in sure. any style. I, I just think it. that would be fun in front of an audience. I love it. Yeah, soliloquy. You but I'm down. sorry. Um, no, I you know I was just saying. I mean, are you you're asking me if I personally have been marginalized be, or think perceived to have been marginalized because of like well if you have I, I don't need to ask you that I know you sure have. I mean I but did, is that why it makes you feel disrespected? I wouldn't say that that's why. I just think that we live in a country where reality stars get paid more, like infinitely more. Um, and, and, and Wait, what do you mean reality stars get than, paid more than than actors? Reality like Bachelor people? Well, definitely if you watch like you know the family shows like let's talk about like kardashians do you know what i'm yeah, saying but that's an anomaly that's 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 the top of the thing i understand that. i mean you know better than me but I, i'm surprised to hear that that your standard housewives <laughs> of you know of burbank well that's a good thing what do the real housewives get paid versus what is someone on a on a show that you know like a really difficult tricky show get paid you know someone on like even like an hbo show get paid i, I bet you if you put them next to each other it wouldn't even be close okay you know, um, and, uh, and, but that's what, you know, that's what people want to watch. So you can't, you can't argue with that. It is what it is. You know, that's, that's what they want to see. The biggest movie stars on the planet generally aren't the most respected movie stars on the planet. Who are, give me an example of someone who's big, who's not respected. What I'm saying is that like, for example, like Robert De Niro in the nineties, like, you know, coming out of the eighties, coming off of the streak of like, you know, Godfather 2 and Taxi Driver and Raging Bull was not paid anywhere near what Meet the Fuckers was. Well, Meet the Fo- Meet well, Meet the Parents. No, um, analyze this was his first film that ever made 100 million dollars in the box office. Yeah, I, I, okay? I think we're talking but that's Godfather 2. That's too. an interesting asterisk because what peop, the look at also what 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 uh, Magic Johnson was paid compared to Trey Young. I mean, it was a different time where the where entertainment was budgeted different. But I mean, I'm not saying compared to the people of today's world. I'm saying at that time, you know, people wanted to go see Rocky IV. They wanted to go see, you know, um, uh, the Rocky IV do 100 million. I'm sure. I mean, we'll put up the. I'd be here. shocked if you know it wasn't if it didn't do way more than any De Niro movie. Like put Raging Bull up against Rocky IV. It's I mean, there's no comparison. Or you know, the top grossing Arnold film of the time. You know, and I mean, but Arnold has T2 had a, Rocky, had a great baby. bag of tricks. Yeah, I mean, Arnold. You know, so I guess what I'm saying is, is that. Or I wish we had a clip of him saying to uh, something of the shenanigans thing. You know, I mean, if I would, I would be amazed to see what like you know Viggo Mortensen gets paid versus you know what you know what what the rock gets paid no no disrespect i'm just saying that there Shout is out to the rock by the way I'll put his instagram handle you know that there's um you know i think there's a there's a difference you know yeah, i yeah. mean and there's kind of a wide range of people you know at the table when it comes to entertainment so it's like a difference between and there's the you know they're not mutually exclusive but you're talking the difference between a star and an artist which they could be both and there is there's a lot of conversation that way you know like when Nicolas Cage won the Oscar for leaving Las Vegas I remember like he and Sean Penn I think had like beef about something because Sean Penn was like why are you going off and doing those big action movies why don't you stay on on this you know this road towards you know artist it was almost like he was jumping from artist to movie star which is which is a i guess a, a delineation that is you know i guess um you know invisible but but also talked about a lot within the industry could i make a very forced wasting your time but well worth it for me um connection between S- since you put it that way we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors Hair is important. Let's not pretend that it isn't. You know, it's not necessary. You know, The Rock looks great. Jason Statham, fantastic. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss. Imagine if there was like a pill you could take that would slow down your aging. That's literally what it is. It's slowing down hair loss. Keeps is convenient. You don't have to go to your doctor. You could literally do a a virtual appointment with a doctor and they answer all of your questions that you might have and you get to keep up with them. And it's like a subscription. Treatments start at just $10 and they have generic versions. It's low cost, discreet packaging, proven results. 
more five star reviews than any of their competitors. Which matters because now because of social media, you, you read those comments mm-hmm. and those reviews. Like I, the first thing I do with a product is go and look at reviews for it now. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tyso to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tyso to get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tyso. Rick. Betty. If I could tell you that your therapy could be cheaper than normal therapy. Mm -hmm. You have my attention. And it's available whenever you travel, wherever you are. You can still keep with the same therapist. Right. And I told you that you can schedule it really easily on an app weekly. Is that British for schedule? Schedule, yes. Okay. What would you tell me? I tell you that you must be listening to take your shoes off a whole bunch because you must have heard about BetterHelp. BetterHelp is convenient, professional, affordable, but also it makes it, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's accessible. That's what I really like about BetterHelp because finding a therapist is tough. Going to a therapist is tough. Leaving the house is tough. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own professional licensed therapist. Therapy is so good. It's so necessary. Oh, and that's nice. You can have video or phone sessions. So you can see yeah. your person. I, I, I like, like Yeah, that. I like doing video. Me too. Oh, you know what else? You can. Ch- we spoke to our friend about this recently that when it comes to therapy, like you should go and see different people until you really click yeah. with someone. And this one you can change and say like, no, that's not for me or this person I didn't click with until you find that person. That's kind of in a way... I guess this is also kind of therapy, but in a way, like w- how we met, going out on first dates, and it's like you got to commit to this thing and yeah. go and meet the person and take the shower and get dressed and wait in the waiting room and run into people or not run into them. Just you have your FaceTimes. You find you find your person. So, Ricky, if you want to start living a happier life today, our listeners are getting. Well, don't we'll tell. Let's tell them, Ricky. I want to tell you, listen to something. I thought you were going to do a Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. No, will, I you, will you do that? Will you do that though? I've never heard you do that, Ricky. Ricky? Ricky. Well. I forget what the first one is meant to be. Yeah. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month. That's like all the sessions you do in your first month Mm -hmm. by visiting our sponsor, betterhelp.com slash Tyso. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso for 10% off your first month. And we're back. You bring up Nicolas Cage and leaving Las Vegas. Boring. Con Air, I got the jacket. Okay, and I get what you're saying, but here's here's my connection. Birthday is July what? July uh, 9th. 9th. Dog, ah, I'm a little off, but it's still kind of close because I'm the 23rd, and I was thinking a perfect connection is Nicolas Cage's daughter in that movie was birthday, I think. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I just remember in the lower level of the plane when, he's, when they're reading the note and they realize that Nicolas Cage is actually not a criminal, but he's getting off, and he's like, right. my daddy's birthday is July 14th. Or no, my dad's coming home July 14th. My birthday's July 14th. I'm going to see my daddy for the first time ever on July 14th. And then he goes, make a move and the bunny gets it. Did I, how did we, how did, okay, so I, first base. you're like a magician. I randomly bring up Nick Cage. You go to Con Air and you go to my dog's birthday, which like you Also were, the bunny, because you referred to him as a bunny. That's what I was You're thinking. into the ballpark of, and then remember verbatim this line from Con Air. What, what is... Did I, what did I, I feel like a prospector. I just panned and I found like a line of gold heading into your knowledge of either Nick Cage action films and CAF or, or Bruck, Bruckheimer action films. BAF. BAF. Bruckheimer action films. That's it. Listen, the truth is everything exists, man. It's just, could we see it? I have a theory and I'm not high, but I'm high. Tell me what you think of this theory. Okay. Also, you know what I'm just realizing? Huh how much I miss stuff and I think I just picked up on something and I'm not calling you out, I'm calling me out. Am I being, is this too much? Am I too much? No, I'm fascinated to see where this is headed. But you, but the thing is, when you sign on to a pod, when a person signs on to a podcast or whatever, it has to go really bad for you just to get up and leave. Like a person or me? That's, because you just go? (sighs) Yeah, man, I'm out of here. No, I, I haven't gotten to that place yet. Oh, fuck. But I want the fear to be there in the air. Why? I want you well because I want you to be on your game. I don't fear. I don't want you to think ah, I'm going to blow this one off. It's that guy from Magic Mike. I want you to really say, "Dude, it's I'm co- here." I, 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 with the guy from Carnegie Mellon. I, I better bring my. A you game. have you really, and I love this. I love this thing. It's a bummer because we're human. Uh-huh. But even that joke is: is he Magic Mike or is he Carnegie Mellon? I get that. 
Well, what's funny is Matt Bomer also was my classmate in Carnegie at Carnegie Mellon, and he was the first phone call that I made after being offered the role. I said, I heard you're getting off. Are you doing, did you get Were you that? thinking not doing it because of what it could imply? Well, I was also already on True Blood with my shirt off and my pants off and nobody, you know, there, there's a bit of the industry. What just happened? That was me summoning up the strength. Okay. That was me like going internal. Like, you know, when Hulk Hogan is on the mat and he's like there, you know, he's in a sleeper hold and they drop his arm twice and then, and then he, and then the hand comes up. It, that's, that was, that was what just happened. But just in a, we'll cut. More, we'll, we'll cut back to a slow mo. Uh, and we're back. Well, yeah. So, so Matt and I went to drama school together, and and so anyway, I don't remember what I was going to say. Um, I was on True Blood. And, Shirt off, pants off. Yeah, and and there was a bit of that that I I didn't want to get too far down that rabbit hole. Um, but when Magic Mike came along, Steven Soderbergh's directing, so I'm going to do anything that he's doing. Like, period. I mean, that's I'm not going to pass up the chance to work with him, even though I'm afraid that if I do that, it's going to cement me in other people's minds. In other people's minds. Is it typecasting or is it your identity? Well, I think it's just, you know, number one, you get offered whatever you just did, you're going to get offered again. Because the industry knows you can do it, so let's get that guy to do it. That's that's kind of the creativity level, right. you know. There aren't I don't know how many people in this industry there are that come from like, you know, where they're looking inside to see, oh yeah, that guy. I know he has hints of that, which means he could do all these other roles. They're thinking, oh, I just saw him do that. Let's get him do that because it's safe. We have a ton of money riding on this. Let's make sure we get somebody who can do it. So is and, this the business side of strategy of keeping yourself dynamic to the industry? To a certain degree, but the other side of it is if you want to make money and really make a great living, then, then you know, you have to be cognizant to a certain degree of what you represent, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things. I think there's like... What do you um, represent? Well, what I mean is like, um, okay, so I think somebody could, if I sat down across from somebody, they would have immediately have opinions about me or immediately see me and they go, okay, that guy rides a motorcycle has written a mo- written ridden a motorcycle that guy definitely probably went to the prom with you Heather know Graham. whoever yeah exactly and and this guy has you know whatever all these things are about him and what they don't know is like i don't ride a motorcycle i skip my prom to go see a re-release of blade runner because i thought that would be more interesting to me you know what i mean they don't they don't see your math sat scores you know and, and even though that's who i am what I have to be cognizant of is what I am when I walk into a room and then what I can actually turn that into. For example, you know, I've given this example before, but it's like, you know, as good as I might be as Stephen Hawking, I'm never going to get cast in that part. Like, it's just not going to happen, yeah. you know? Um, but that's not based on ability. That's based on your what you look but like. But that's what I mean. There are boxes that... You if, fit into if I'm you're six, playing five, something you know, autobiographical to it, a certain degree, but also like, like I can never play you. Well, that's well. The my point is that I don't need to like worry about that. I need to worry about being right. what's in you your know. Control. Okay, there's there's this um, Jackson, Mississippi construction worker guy. Oh, and he's also a werewolf. Well, they're looking for that on an H, you know, on an HBO show. Okay. I can fit into that, you know, I, I, you know, there are roles that are right for me and I have to understand what those are. And then through, you know, theater, the art, whatever you want to call it. Like, I know that I can fit other things as well, but they're going to take, you know, but, but sometimes on film, you can't change that much, which is why, you know, actors get into like, you know, crazy weight gain up and down yeah. for film because you, you can't hide it somewhere. You have to be you know, you are what you are to a certain degree, unless you have like a team of makeup artists that are going really going to change you, and you can, you can, you know, pull that all off. You said you don't know what I, I'm gonna, what my, not me being Rick, me being the person opposite you that doesn't know you, is what you're the thinking of you and who you might be. Mm-hmm. Um, and I talk a lot about this not a lot, but enough. It's what my coincidentally the Amazon show I'm on is kind of about. But I came into some awareness a few years ago of my world just completely I I had no idea anything and then I just found something out and the biggest version of that is how much I don't know 
So a skill of mine isn't reading people, but understanding that this, uh, uh, understanding how not to project the, and fill in the blanks, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there are certain things that you could do. And I, my I, version of you, which I had 5% of it, and now I have six, <laughs> is you are an actor um, and you play D&D. And I don't know enough about D and D. I want. I've always wanted to. Yeah. I played in, in high school once, but I don't remember the game. I just, I decided to go magic. Well, if, you, if you like magic, I mean, you you I certainly know. would like D and D. I just don't. You know, I haven't been around it yeah. enough. No. Well, D and D takes a lot more to play, which is why they created Magic. Magic was the card game that people could play at conventions yeah. while they were waiting for the games to start. Because D and D, D and D require. I mean, generally, it's like prepping to for a TV episode. Yeah, I like your showrunner analogy. You, sense. And you need somebody who's willing to do that or who wants to do that, which is why it's so hard to find the right, you know, the right person to run the game. The reason I bring it up is because I assume a, a character type. There's to me there's four character types. Uh-huh. There are there's the horny old man, there's the leading man, there's a the strong best friend, and then there's the D&D slash magic player. And I know the first and the last. Okay, I know a lot of horny old men. Sure. And I know a good amount of. I was friends with. The, that's who. When I had, those are the people that let me be their friends. Right. You don't match the mold, and uh, I think of that as a awesome thing because I I didn't get confidence until basketball because people picked me for something. Right. I didn't start playing basketball until tenth grade. I didn't get good until college. So. I want that I am almost it feels like the opposite of you where I want that identity of Rick's a cool athlete thing. Be- Don't get me wrong. I-, I always did too. Yeah, but you have it. It's, it's, you feel it's an obstacle in your craft. Well, there, but isn't that, isn't that life? I mean, yeah, of course. You, you, you crest a hill and then you go, hell, I could probably crest that one over there. Let me try it. You I know, don't you- think a lot of people do. I think a lot of people, uh, I think if they're lucky enough to crest something, then that's what they want to lean into. And I think there's pros and cons to that. But that's but my, my buddy of mine, I just sh- shouted him out. Incidentally, um, I had Joel McHale over the other day, and he has a message for you, <laughs> if, I, if I remember to pull it up, up on the TV. Joe Maganello, one of my favorite people. Hi, it's Joel McHale. Just want to say, for the world, you put out that amazing Dungeons & Dragons book. It's great. It has given our family many hours of fun, so thank you for that. And just a little advice, Joe. Hit the gym once in a while. A little consistency in the exercise, and you will finally get into shape. I swear. I'm Joel McHale. McHale. (laughs) But um, Gerard Carmichael, do you know who that is? Yes. He said to me, um, wait, what were were you just talking about? It was a perfect connection. Uh, Oh, he said, uh, 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 you said people need to know that you could do something and they'll cast you for it again. Right. This is what I kind of talked about with Joel, but Gerard said to me, once people know you could walk and chew gum, they'll let you do that. Like mm. it's, it's a simple thing. They just have to know you could do it, but right. you have to still prove it to people. And yeah. another thing he said was, uh, fuck, fast forward this. Um, uh, what were we just talking about? Well, we were talking about basically like breaking type, breaking mold. You he, know, you don't fit in this category. He said, uh, and maybe this is an obvious statement, but I, I think of this as a, a as a microcosm to anything that fits in this in this uh, uh, analogy. But Jay Z, every I mean, I don't know if it's every decade, every album or two, mm-hmm. he it's he completely does something different. Right. Um, well, he, David Bowie. Let's go to David Bowie. I mean, for the for the older heads, or David Bowie was called the chameleon because you know he was Ziggy Stardust. Then you know he had the Berlin years, you know Tin Machine, and then I'm not educated enough, but I, I understand what you're saying. Well, okay, so the '90s, he went on tour with Nine Inch Nails because he had this very dark um, serial killer uh, concept album where he was a, a de- there was a detective chasing the serial killer who was killing people and turning their bodies into artwork and leaving these pieces of art, you know, kind of this like seri- NFTs today. serial killer Banksy, and. His each song, if you listen, you're like, wow, he's doing different things with his voice. Oh, he, he, yeah. you know, he's playing different characters. He plays a different character in each song. One song, he's the detective. The next song, cool. he's layering his voice so he's the townspeople who are afraid. And then in one song, he's the serial killer. And is this a subtext or is it part of the lyrics? Well, and then he wrote this whole book 
the booklet that goes along with it that's the story of right and that's then, cool so it's it's really amazing and then after that drum and bass started happening which is this very like we're in drum and bass beforehand? obscure jungle you know jungle music from from the mid 90s i'm not understanding are you saying the instruments of drum and a bass uh well it's like music that goes at six eight time it's like a tech it's kind of an electronic music but also they would usually have organic drums like for example um you know, apropos to Banksy, uh, there's an artist named Ronnie Size who coincidentally also came from Bristol, England, where, you know, Massive Attack and Tricky came from and Portishead and like all the trip hop. I know none of this. So this is, okay, so there's a brand of music called trip hop, which was kind of England's answer to American hip hop during the the early to mid to late 90s. So you, you had groups like I just mentioned that came out of that. And it was kind of hip hop run, th- hip hop and R&B run through their filter, which to me was like catnip. I but what is apropos to Banksy? I didn't understand. Banksy's what you're from Bristol, supposedly. Uh, the artist Banksy. Supposedly so. because we don't know who he is. Well, but there was this incredible like art scene. It was almost like Seattle. What Seattle was to us in the 90s, Bristol was to England in the 90s. Like all these incredible musicians and artists like came out of that scene. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, and there was a guy named Ronnie Size and he would make drum and bass music with a live band. So he would actually have them play live drum and bass where... Like a live DJ, but with instruments. Right, And but at the time you had... You had guys from England like LTJ Bookham and um, now LGBT plus Bookham, <laughs> or you know Bookham if you want to, if they could chew that's, gum. That's a that's a funny funny joke actually for uh for, so so you, so anyway, no, finish it, that actually but, but, for a, but they were they were making drum and bass out of um basically like computers the way that you know other electronic acts of the time were mm-hmm. but Ronnie Size um, and even Groove Armada would come out sometimes with live music sets and they would do like a live set with with a, like bands and trumpets and things like that and drummers and and stuff. I don't. So, I mean, this we is gotta dr- go. drum, drum and bass music. Drum and bass. Uh, what was I? What was I even relating that all to? David Bowie. But David Bowie. We, so we David, a, so we drum, gotta go above the line. Drum on and that, bass though. was very underground but happening and Bowie knew about it. So then Bowie's follow up album to the one I was just talking about that concept album was a drum and bass album. When he started doing, you know, I'm afraid of Americans, and you know, he got into that phase. Um, that, but what I'm saying is, he just he transformed at every and single point in his career, and that was his thing. Not that's the example that I'm trying to make of of of. But there are also people who are very successful who find their thing yes. and they fucking beat it to death. Or you have Sturgill Simpson who puts out a bunch of country albums and then puts out Sound of Fury and like blows people's minds and makes this kind of like dark, groovy you know, pseudo hard rock album. Um, D-G-S-H-R-A. To me, those are the people that I pay attention to. Those are people that I really, really love. I, I'm always curious to see what they're doing and, and what's coming out of their filter because they're always trying to grow. Edward Norton was another example. Edward Norton was yeah. never the highest paid actor on the planet, but like I respected how much of a chameleon he was and how much he fought against being stuck in a box. Um, Do you have um, uh, champions... Is that quite, like, do you have people that are in this business in some way or another that do see you as an artist that you enjoy being around because yeah, of that? Yeah, I, I have here and there. You know, it's like, um, so I made a documentary called Le Bear years ago that I self finance and produce with my brother Nick. And, um, you know, we played, we played uh, Park City, a slam dance festival, sold out screening. People were screaming, yelling laughing their heads off. I mean, the response was unbelievable. Elvis Mitchell, the famed film critic, was a huge fan of the film, loved it, did the Q&A afterwards. Cool. Soderbergh and company loved the film. The people I really care about loved the film. Um, Variety came out and just destroyed it. They, they cut you off. But... There were a bunch of employees of Variety who came to that screening and asked me if they could come and work for me in my film company afterwards because they love the movie so much and they want to do whatever I do in the future. They so give a little wave. So every, everyone at the company is there so coming what is, to see my film mean? and they loved it and you know the the person who was reviewing it hated it, you know. So it's just a matter of like, you know, that person I think was reviewing it as Oh, it's that it's that guy that I've marginalized in my brain or kind of stuck in a box and and now I'm gonna write this crazy review that wasn't even like it wasn't even what the film was about, what they were writing about. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but their perception was colored by I think somebody who careful in the language there somebody who had a uh, you know a, re- a reputation already and was being judged on that reputation rather than you know the people that I the people that mattered to me loved the film and got it and laughed their heads off and understood the humor and the nuance um, where I think you know somebody else who hasn't sat in a room with me and met me and and and, and known who I was. Um, they don't get it. They just, they don't get me until I get in a room with them. And, you, and I've found that that's, that's the case. You're married. So this I doesn't, am. um, congratulations. Thanks. Uh, uh, uh <laughs> but, uh, I look at dating as the same as finding new friends or being in social situations that aren't work. It's just, sure. here's who I, I am who I am. And there's a sense of manipulation to get you to see me properly, but I have to lie. So, you know, it, the, the opposites fill in each other. Uh, an <laughs> example, I, I, uh-huh. I do a bit about how, um, Going, uh, if, when you're going out with uh, a girl or a guy and you, you're supposed, there's certain rules that are built in that I didn't write that I don't subscribe to. But if you do, if I'm going on a date with you and you subscribe mm-hmm. to them, I have to dance around them. Uh, let me give you a little example. Okay. Opening the car door for a girl. Yeah. If I'm coming from the passenger side, it's my pleasure to yeah. get the door for you. Yeah. I would love to get the door for you. Yeah. But if we're coming from the driver's side and I'm driving because I'm the man. I have to now go around to get the door for you. And in my head, the only I know the only reason I'm doing this is to show you that I'm a good guy, which to me is lying. It's manipulating her. And I could be a bad guy and get the door for you. But the moment I open the door for her, I feel like a liar. The problem that I used to have that I'm getting better at is mm-hmm. I have a very difficult time lying. It's, a, it's, it's not even a moral thing. I just, it's, a, it's just hard for me because once I lie, I'm now... I'm not present anymore. Yeah, I mean, so what are you saying? Is that is that like laziness? Like you don't want to have to keep all those plates in the air in your mind? You just want to no, be able to... No, it's that, it's that I don't want to have to lie to you. Here, let me put this in your, mm-hmm. in your in, for you. When you walk into a room um, uh, for an audition with your shirt off, mm-hmm. uh, for, for, what's that? Not anymore, but yeah, go ahead, sure. But I mean, you're making my point even more, <laughs> more, more underlined. Yeah. If you have to take your shirt, if you had to take your shirt off rewind x years ago right you have to do this Mm -hmm. there's a part of you that is not going to want to walk in with your shirt off you would rather probably wear something baggy to show i'm not this guy because you're going to have to take your shirt off unless well i think you should walk into the room setting up whatever it is that you're you know you, you a lot of times want people to see you as a character right away like you said unless it's like some reveal like you're not supposed to know that this guy's in unbelievable shape, so you're going to hide it. When I go into it, uh, I earlier we talked about you have a basketball court and it gets competitive. Um, <laughs> I love that. I I started getting friends through competition. I'm now physical. I'm now on their level. I get to fight, and it's just you know this. Yeah. If you're opposite somebody competitive, that's a love language, right? Uh-huh. Um, I'm not. <laughs> does that make sense? To a degree, because I'm going to come back to your opening the car door analogy, and we're going to talk about that. All right. I'll remember, but let me finish yeah. this. Uh, I, For right or wrong, I first got friends. I was first included. I started getting confidence because I would walk into the gym and people say, I got Rick. And yeah. that was validated by me getting into fist fights and pushing people and talking shit and being aggressive and Great. being something I never was before, right? I'm working out. I feel like, I feel like what, I, what I'm doing is working for me. Mm-hmm. So that's my identity. That's yes. what I'm forcing on people. Cut to X years later, I'm in a basketball game with my old boss, Bill Lawrence. I don't know if you know Bill. He was the, he, he, uh, was the showrunner of the, the show I was on. Okay. And he has this industry basketball game. And they're 40-year-old comedy writers. And I'm in there just dunking on fools. I want to say I dunked, but I'm not. That's not what I'm doing. A couple of times, usually a fast break, not on people. You, but I'm pushing. You, you dunk in like an industry game, like please. That's you're gonna get respect. The opposite. Um, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe. But I, Bill, who is one of my good friends, and uh, he is, you know, a, a big guy in the business, and you want him to like you. I got the show because of the basketball game. I played basketball with him. Then he had me audition. Yeah. I'm in this game for years, and he had to. And I've talked about this before. I'll give a condensed version. But mm-hmm. this was the inciting incident to this self-discovery that I made of a bigger thing. But I got kicked out of the basketball game. Um, in my head at the time, because I'm too good. Too aggressive. Uh, it, was, it was just too aggressive. Uh, people don't enjoy my company. Uh, I am... Well, listen. Me competing, wanting to... People say, you know, picnic volleyball. Joe, can't you just have fun? I have fun when I'm winning. 
I don't have fun. Yeah, when I don't want to sit and I don't wait have to fun play next. When I'm playing half assed and I don't go up to meet the ball at the net or spike it as hard as I can, and then the other team tar- scores a point and starts pointing at me and talking shit like, oh, Mr. Volleyball, oh, yeah. we're winning. That's what I hate more than life itself, which has also led to me never playing picnic, 4th of July volleyball ever again. Because I, I was like, that's the point. I turned into an animal because as soon as they somebody taunted me, it was like, all right, no more Mr. Nice Guy. I was trying to have fun and play and have, you know, quote unquote, but now you're all going to pay. And if, if the other people were into that, you guys become closer. If they're not, now you can't well, play. Well, I'm the only one on the anymore. junior Olympic team who's playing picnic volleyball at 16. And I'm like smashing people. You know what I mean? I tattooed somebody's face with the ball and it sounded like a gunshot went off. And I mean, I turned into like the monster. It feels like another Meet the Parents reference. It, it's completely. When I saw that movie, I was like, Shh. I, I, yeah, I identify. So, I, oh, and we'll go back into uh, whatever the fuck <laughs> we were talking what about. What I'm saying is that your competitive side comes out. Let me get this one thing And out. these guys don't want to play that way. To them, there's also other th- other things where I'm, t- I'm too loud, I'm, but it's all part of competitive for me. Sure. But I bring this up because I <laughs> want this identity of Rick dunks. Rick, yeah. is, Rick is strong. Rick is cool. I want yes. this thing. But I, that's going to get me kicked out of games, baby. I can't be. So what I'm saying is what I've noticed I have to do. If I'm, if, if I'm new to a basketball game now, yeah. I am, am going to come in. I'm going to not make strong eye contact. Mm-hmm. I'm, going to, I'm going to be passing way more than I wanted to. Mm-hmm. I'm going to not drive to the hole. I'll probably play a guard game when I'm, you know, I could do it. But I'm, you know, I'm a small forward. Until, <laughs> yeah. until they're like, oh, this is what Rick's identity is. Rick is a guy that opens the car door for people. Then it allows me this freedom to be myself, which, which people, people need, mm-hmm. which is tough. It's a language that I don't understand and it's manipulative and I fucking hate it. No, it's being smart and being aware of what you represent, which goes back to what I was saying about the Stephen Hawking thing. You have to understand who you are when you walk into a room and you have to be cognizant of that. Well, there's a difference between who you are and how you receive. But the other side of it is you have talent. You have talent at basketball. You're good at this. Thank you. And you're playing with people who don't necessarily have your talent level. And so what you have to do is be cognizant that this is some sort of social game. It's not competitive where you're going to win games and based upon that, you're going to go to the playoffs and compete for a state championship or NCAA championship. This is for fun and it's for socializing. So what you have to do is you have all this talent, which is in one side of a scale. So now that scale is heavy. You have to put something on the other side of the scale. And what you have to put in there but is why? Like, when so we sat other down, people was, could receive it. So other people can feel good. When we sat down, what? When we sat down, you, you said some very self-deprecating things. And I thought, this, guy's, this guy knows what's going on. I mean, it's when Howard Stern talks about how tiny his dick is constantly. Why? To try to get other people to feel comfortable with him. Because he had women all over the place. And he's famous. And he just signed a $100 million contract. And it's smart for him to then put himself down to a level where people feel comfortable. They don't, they don't hate him mm-hmm. for it. You know, um, I just think that, like, even more so, you ever watch Survivor? I've seen a couple. Okay, so in Survivor, there's always some like alpha male who can hunt and kill a shark with a spear and feed the whole tribe, and they love that dude. And when there's there's physical competitions, they want that guy on their team because right. they're going to win. Right. As soon as it breaks into individuals where there's no more tribes and it's every man for themselves, yeah, every the, 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 the people who are sitting around who never went and got food for anybody, who are laying in their hammock all day, are the first ones to try to gang up and try to kick that guy out, and there's a, there's a and that's there is something about that that is true. There's and social I th- and politics, I, and you think you have to be cognizant, and you have to, you know, it's why when I got to drama school, I was always tall my whole life, and because I'm tall, I went like this. I had my neck like that. Yeah. So they had to fix my posture because got- I was what was I doing? Apologizing yeah, yeah, for yeah. how tall I am. Don't be. Don't be intimidated. Don't be scared. I'll do it for you. I'll, I'll, I'll lower my head. But that, but you know, you understand? It's a bu- but you know, it's a bummer. That is, yeah, I understand, but I don't agree with it because well, it's aggravating. You know what I mean? To a certain degree, because you just want to be you. You want to get out there and dunk and have fun and yell and have a blast. But that's for that's why I loved sports because you could really let loose. I could be as tall as I wanted to be. And, and scary as I wanted to be or as intimidating as I wanted to be 
It, was that intimidating? Those eyebrows? In it, that was my. Yeah, this <laughs> feels a little like goofy. <laughs> <laughs> that was my Jack Nicholson. No, so you know you want to. Uh, you're allowed to do that because it's it's structured that way. You know who structured the world otherwise? Everyone. This is I society, haven't. but this is what's this is society. So I think, you know, during the '80s, I grew up in an era where you looked at. Our heroes, our action heroes, they look like action figures. Uh-huh. Everybody looked like He-Man. So when you're a kid, you aspired to be them. Yeah. You went to the weight room so you could be built like Arnold or Rambo or, or Van Damme or Dolph Lundgren or whoever that those, was. I, the, the, uh, I mean, I guess those were the big ones, but Schwarzenegger was 90% of my wall. I had Dude. a Universal Soldier and I had some, uh, some yeah. Rocky. I dreamed. That's everybody who ever went in the weight room who was of our generation. That That's the reason why. It was because of Arnold. You know, So you wanted to aspire to be that. But You worked with him too. I mean, we, oh, yeah. I don't want to get too much off of a thing, but keep oh, going yeah. if we have no, time. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, you know, so, so I think that you know, I think the 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 aspirations have changed. Well, I don't. I don't to a certain degree, I think that aspirations of what? You know, um, I mean, it's like why are people upset about Victoria's Secret? I don't know because it creates out? this impossible body image for women. Oh, oh, right, right. You know, and even like Magic Mike, like I would get questions about like, do you think that you're creating an impossible? you know, a standard for, for men, like an unhealthy standard. I'm like, no, I was like in the best shape of my life. Like, what do you mean creating? Like, Oh, you mean like mentally? Like, I don't know. Like anyone's free to, you know, like you can, you can go work out. But what, what do you, what does that have to do with what's, what people are okay. What I'm saying is that there there was, there was an amount of it that was trying to make someone feel guilty for working hard for trying hard, for using their abilities, you know, um, I just, I just, you know, I, 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 I want to try to inspire people to, to do better and be the best that they can. I mean, I wrote a book about bodybuilding. I got offered a bodybuilding book and Arnold, uh, wrote the foreword for it. And it's basically, what's it called? It's called evolution. And it's, it's a step-by-step. It's just, but it's all about the mentality of, you know, um, once you start getting into shape, people are going to start looking at you and they're going to start getting put off. You know, how many times I was at dinner and people were like, you're, you're eating that? I've been told Oh my that- God, why aren't I eating that? And, and, and how, many, how, many, how much do you work out a day? You know, they would get freaked out about it. And it's like, listen, I, I like, I don't, I, you know, I could, I could feel their anxiety just because I was pursuing this goal in the way that I was. And what I'm saying is that when you go out on a limb like that, you have to kind of put something in the other side of the scale to, to make people understand like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not here to like steal your girlfriend or something you know what i mean i'm just i'm just working hard at, at this trade and, and yeah. this is my job and but I look enjoy what that's it. doing to you it's making you feel like like people are judging your drama school and and you can't be this thing and i'm not going to go in with my shirt off anymore and when i sit down i want you to know that i went to carnegie mellon not that i was a werewolf and how fucking exhausting that is no i mean you just you just keep doing your thing i mean you know i'll yeah you but know, those aren't but that's if not the, but if getting the ro- in the way if, well if the role requires it you, you do what the role requires i guess is, is the point um i think the, but socially you know, forget the role socially well i think socially how somebody perceives that is none of my business and there's not you know there but doesn't it affect you well i mean just from the standpoint of you know i'm i always like i'm a guy's guy like uh-huh. guy's stuff so the last thing i would want was for a guy to be turned off or be a guy who's like i hate that guy or look at that guy because i could be as tall as i wanted to be <laughs> joe it's a little manipulative um no, I I I understand. Do you, what you're you understand saying. what I'm I do saying? Understand. Like it, it, there there's a bit of it where also I think you're kind of, you know, as an actor, you generally want to hide who you are and you don't want people to know who you are. You know, that's they, that's what I was saying about an uh, that's what I was getting to. You say you want to go into the audition being that thing. I and tell me if I'm wrong, but because I've been excluded and 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 I don't think they're wrong I like I said I didn't know how I was being received because I've been kicked out and my whole life special learning disabled classes special schools only could hang out with the magic kids getting kicked off the basketball I mean I'm never included and then I realized this thing that I'm still trying to understand and because of that I now lean into the opposite approach which is uh, uh, again it's just I'll use a microcosm uh, a term but when I go in for something where my my line is to say 
uh, uh, holy shit, those are a nice bunch of fucking tits, you bitch, or whatever. I am going to make a point to come in looking down and not being high energy. So when they call action, maybe it would benefit me for them to think, Rick is that guy, we should cast him. But I choose to be Rick isn't that guy because that gets him kicked out of everything and look what he's able to become. Does that make sense? And when do you pretend and open the car door, oh, 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 keep your hands and feet in the vehicle at all times and have to make a joke because I'm nervous she thinks I'm lying to her versus walking in with my shirt off. (laughs) So wait, we went from opening the car door to all of a sudden your shirt's off. The the, the car door analogy of being, I'm not getting the car, I think it's ridiculous. Uh And and I don't think I'm right, that's just my truth. I think that you could get the door, it's fine. So the point being, when I open it for you, I'm only doing it to show you my palms. Well, is it that or, see, because I I think you can come from a different place. You know, I think, number one, I think that in early dating. Early as in back in the day or the first date? Meaning like when you're going on like a first or a second date. Right. Like just go for your first date. Um, You know, it's a good litmus test. I think. For whom? For, you know, I mean, for the whoever you are going out with. But let's, so if I open. Well, it's a good litmus test for you. You are performing a litmus test to a certain degree, but but that's not where you're coming from. What I'm saying is that what I do is I show up the same way. Every time. And if on the 20th date, I know I'm not going to want to open the door, why am I lying to you on the first one? Well, I always do. But that's, that, but that's that, your truth. That, that's that's, that's, my, your that's my, my code is that I'm there to protect. So if she's in high heels and we have to walk across stones in a driveway to get her in the car or wherever, it doesn't matter. My arm is out. I'm walking her there to make sure. Cause high heels are hard to walk in. You know what, what I mean? Telling? Unless you're from Columbia, you're born in high heels. But that's a whole other show. But still, it doesn't, ma- it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. I still show up the same way. You walk to the door, hold it open, make sure that they're in there, make sure the dress doesn't get caught in the door. And then, boom, you close it, go around. I'm, no matter what, I do that. Great. Now, on a first date, someone could say something like, I could get my own door. And you go, oh. See, we're saying the same thing, okay. but the opposite. But that's the litmus test. Then you go, well, if we're arguing now yeah, yeah. about the door, when I like, I want someone who knows how to let me be a man. I have a counterpoint, and I feel really good about this. Go ahead. First of all, it's up to you if you feel like a man. But well, he, I don't want to fight about it. But I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to argue about. Earlier, it. Earlier, I said to you, when like, oh, is this going? Are you? Do you want to leave? Because people wouldn't leave, and you said people or I wouldn't, which I took from that. Maybe it was a joke, but just you're the type of guy that if you don't want to be here, you're just out. I have. I am. I am housebroken. I okay. Have, I have manners, but like, if I came in here and you were trying to insult me, right. then yeah, I mean, what do what, you know? So what, what I, are we doing? I bring this up because I'm the type of person that not only wants, but but needs someone to say to me, I could get my own door. Rick, we don't like it when you drive to the hole like this. I need people. So yeah. if, if, I, if, if somebody were to, for example, the opposite, which would be me, if a, if a girl says to me, I like when somebody opens a door for me, I would, even if it starts a thing, I would like that because either now we know this isn't gonna work or we open a dialogue of me saying, I could get the door for you. Here's my perspective on it. Could we have, let me know if, if we see eye to eye. I, and I understand what you're saying. And, and I guess it's, it's up to the individual at that point, you know, but with me knowing who I am, I feel good yeah. or I, I, yeah. I feel good by doing good. So this is a way for me to put gas in that, in that gas tank, you know, of feeling good, which is I am useful. I am helping her across wet cobblestones oh, to the door. Useful. I am putting her in. Right. I am making sure the dress, I am protecting her. I am making sure that, you know, she gets in safely and doesn't fall or hurt herself. Like that makes me, and whether or not she ever does it or that never yeah, even yeah. happens, you know, like, and this is a thing about me too. Like, I like, I am comfortable. I found that I am comfortable sleeping on the side of the bed closest to the the door door because you can run out faster. Uh I can get the attacker or the person breaking in. Like I'm there and you could say, oh, well, I can do that. Or what if they come in through the window, Joe? You know, like you can say that. But what I'm saying is that the intention for me is to be of use, which is, I think, trickier knowing that like there is a man inside of me that is 200,000 years old that What's hasn't that hasn't changed 
Uh, it, it would be like a Neanderthal dialect. Uh, so it, it, it probably would, it would be the name. I connect with you. I do the door thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but but to me, and there's no right or wrong, it, yeah. but to me, there's use in being closer to the door to protect. My thoughts are there's no use in getting the door for a girl. Well, unless unless a girl falls down heading around the car and then you're like, but why would she why fall do down? Because she's in heels and there's stones and she goes down, you know, whatever that is or something was on the side. Have you ever or, dated a girl who fell down on the way to the car? I have seen girls fall in okay. front of me. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. And I've caught, I've caught them. I've, you know, and, and you just, yeah. you know, catching you, a girl probably makes you want to walk her to the door more. Well, it's, it's just the fact that, you know, this is how I show up. This is what it is. And there's a lot of other things that come along. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Joe, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I'm loving this conversation still, but I want to fill up my coffee. Can I do that real quick? Yeah. Do you want more? I love that stuff. I'll take some more. And I had so many questions prepared that we didn't get to. I'm really liking it. <laughs> no, and, and and I like this too because it's like it's just stuff that like you know you don't get to talk about a lot. You know, it's like it's like true podcast stuff that podcast. we're talking about. You know. As opposed to interview. Well, it kind of is like you know. How how better to get to know somebody than you know than and what I like about it too is also how many times I wind up in an interview and somebody's just bringing up all the stuff they read on the internet that is not correct and so we wind up like unraveling all this crap that's like not oh, right. correct. It's, it's not having conversation, but it's so it's kind of better when we're talking about subjects that like you don't assume that you know what I think or or any of that like you know you're you're honestly like. We're getting to know each other, which I mm. enjoy more than, hey, so I read your Wikipedia page. Is this true? Sure. Which Would is- you learn a drama school? Um, yeah. No, I'm saying it's the same voice. There's also just being <laughs> fully transparent. There's something about podcasting, but this podcast, I mean, yeah. through my world, where I'm literally asking people to come into my living room. You know, mm. I'm, I'm hosting you, but yeah. I don't want to be your host. I want to have a conversation with you. Yeah. Plus, you don't know me. I know you. There's a dynamic that that is just built in that isn't fear-based, unfortunately. <laughs> but I could acknowledge it to where I don't want you going, walking back to your, walking back to your car being like, what the fuck did I just do? You know what I mean? But I also yeah. don't want to have to open the door for you because you might fall. You know, and and well, no, I'm a, I'm a guy. We die or we die earlier. We give until we're dead. Like it's just it's just part of the job. And I think the sooner you realize that as a young man, the better off you're going to be. As far as how you treat a woman, it, well, is that what you're getting at? Just in, in in the world in general, you know, it's like Chris Rock put it best. It's like, you know, nobody nobody ever thanks dad for keeping the lights on. Like thanks dad for knocking out this rent. And you know, nobody ever goes on TV and says, "Hi dad, I love you." It's always, "Hi mom." You know, and what does dad get for all of his troubles? The big piece of chicken. I'll tell you what and dad that's gets. that's it. Dad gets a shout out. We'll be right back with a word from Marshall Rugg Gallery. <laughs> if you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll certainly find them. And by the way, thank you, mom, for keeping the lights on. Uh, but tell me what you're saying about the, the sooner I know this. What are you saying? You're saying not needing recognition? Look, I'm saying, I'm saying the men need to grow up. And I'm saying that... The, but what the, does it have to do with what we were talking about? Well, we're talking about... I'm, well, I'm talking about traditional chivalry, yeah. which is now seen as probably being, you know, the tyrannical patriarchy or something, when it's like you're just... I think it's based on truth, what you f- want to be doing. Well, sure. And and in today's world, like everyone... Look, listen. Everyone's free to be whoever they are, okay? No, you have to go into a basketball game a certain way. That's the juxtaposition I'm trying to kind of well, break but, apart. But that's battle. That's battle. Going into an audition, having a first date, meeting somebody outside and letting them know, hey, I'm, I'm a little neurotic right now. But these are also things, there are many different ways to skin a cat, so to speak, in those examples. But what, we're, what I've always been interested in are universal truths. Mm-hmm. And so regardless of sex or gender, I think the Chinese had it right when they said that there was a yin and a yang. There's an aggressive and a receptive. I think it was the Irish. <laughs> was that the Irish? I think it was the Irish. And the Chinese, and it's fine, and they took it. I, uh, James Joyce, I'm sure, I'm sure, has a book about it. Um, you know, when people talk about James Joyce and Tennessee Williams and stuff, just uh-huh. so you know, in case yeah. you want to know how you're received, yeah. it forces the other person to think, this guy knows his stuff. 
Well, sure. that a is that a well, trick? Well, you're, you're name dropping your, yeah, your literary references? Yeah, it's not name yeah. dropping people you know. It's name dropping people you, you know well, of. Well, when Nietzsche said... No, okay. Uh, it's Nietzsche, I think. Nietzsche? Yeah. I always was. I always said Nietzsche. It was Nietzsche who once said, just do it. That, I don't know if that joke translates. And Phil Knight stole it? I was doing a Nike he joke. He co-opted. Did Phil Knight come up with a Nike slogan? Just do it? Yeah. Well, someone that worked for Phil Knight did. Do you ever have a conversation with someone and wish you could re- take back the last 10 seconds of things you said? Is this one of those moments for you? Oh, I love it. Okay. Let's put it in again. Do you ever have a conversation with someone and wish you could re- take back the last 10 seconds of things you said? Um, um, you know, yin yang. I just think that, I think that there are, you know, like magnets don't magnetize i i think that someone You're talking need, about opposites correct and i and i think that i think that in relationships or successful relationships someone has to assume one of those roles and someone has to assume another one if you want i think a greater intimacy i think that that, that that's how it's achievable i think if you come in you both come in with the same energy then I, you know, I, I think that, like I said, that that's built for conflict. Are you? Would that be similar to you saying these character types in a multicam? You could only have one of each archetype; otherwise, it's a waste. Um, generally, yeah. I mean, I think also you're going to run into like how you know y- you the, the Phantom Menace, Star Wars, is is one that comes to mind where you have Obi Wan and you have Qui Gon. They're the same character. That should have been one character, but we wanted to sell two action figures instead of one so we have two why wasn't that wanting, just one character i took that as because we're going back we need an origins we're showing how somebody became what they did but that could that should have just been obi-wan the whole time it should have just been one character it didn't need to be two so what you have happen is that you wind up splitting all that great all those great moments I understand the two. what you're saying. One's I, hanging out while the other one, because they're basically yeah. the same. They're the same character. They're so, they, one of them is superfluous. Uh, so, do you? Interestingly enough, I learned the word superfluous in my first drama class in high school. So, I wonder if you learned it in a drama class. Superfluous. Uh, I think that was a high school SAT word, if I remember correctly. I remember uh, she said superfluous, and I asked what that meant, and somebody told me that um, I don't remember what they said, but the implication was. Uh, aren't you embarrassed? It, it wasn't a negative thing. It was like a, it was a, it was a compliment to me, mm-hmm. like that you weren't embarrassed for admitting you didn't know something. It's a small little nugget, but I think that has a gr- great part in. I, I never, mm. I'll always ask mm. questions, and I just, right. I put that into that. But word. isn't, but isn't that like a real true sign of intelligence? Is when you don't know something, you have the confidence to say. I don't know. Yeah, well, it could, the it, best it, leaders, I think, can say that. I think all too often, unfortunately, like especially like in in like the studio system, studio executives aren't willing to say I don't know, and they pretend that they know, and then you wind up with like really shitty movies. Sometimes my girlfriend will say something, and uh, I, I can't think of an example now, but I, I, I she'll say, "Here's an example. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you spell? Uh, how do you spell?" Um, Maganello, 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 yeah, Maganello. How do you spell that? Um, by the way, she'll uh, eight out of ten times get something like that right, but she won't say. I think it's M A N G, whatever. Mm-hmm. She'll just tell me, and it's like, well, now I wrote it. <laughs> now it's in pen. Just say I don't know. I think there's an inherent sense of humor uh, to to pretending that you know things and, and saying them and selling them. Oh, I, I do, I do that. With, I do that with my wife all the time. But it, but you're you're doing a bit. I'll sell it, and then yeah, exactly, and then she'll. But I'll have to do it like totally, like believably, like like deadpan, like in the pocket, like yeah. this is what it is, and then she'll. I do the same. What do you do? Like no, yeah. what do you? And I'm like, <laughs> no, it's, gotcha. you have to understand that Tennessee Williams actually when it first originated the. Yeah, here's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing is a great way to tell people I know what I'm talking about, <laughs> and then you, actually, and then you touch their face to emasculate them. Here's the thing. And, what the f- you no, ever do that? Do no. you like do things like where you put your hands on people like back pre-COVID? I guess I I do do it. I do uh, I do have hand hand cadence. I've learned for for example, if you put your finger up and then put your hands in circles, people will not interrupt your pause. Right? If you lean, <laughs> no no no, hear me out, hear me out, stop 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 stop, stop. hear me out. When you lean forward, it's letting people know I know it's to come. You know, there's an interesting thing. I used to I don't pick up on facial cues very well, but I never knew that I was missing them. 
And I used to, I've learned what they mean. Yeah. Uh, you've had something to say. I could read your facial. Well, well, what I was going to say was that there was an actor who shall remain nameless who I know that on his first day of working with the director walked it up, walked up to the director and in an incredible, like masculine display of control, grabbed the director by the beard and was like, Oh God, it's so good to be here. And just kind of moved his head yeah. and his body by his beard in this act of like primate, like, yeah, you're going to try to give me directions and I'm not going to listen to any of them. So just back off. Here we go. You know, and that was moment one on set. Well, you don't one. have to say the name, but it was Howie Mandel. <laughs> Howie Mandel from the show with the bicycle. So, you know, there, there are what we're talking about is like, you know, physical controls over people or, or at least like, like kind of like neurolinguistic patterning like NLP. NLP remember that you went no. all, all the all the pickup artists I were doing magic analogy. tricks tricks and doing things to try to attract females there was a, a book that was written about it that was the, the game it, right right it, by Neil Strauss and there was like a whole kind of subculture that got exposed because of that and but I think circling back to what we're talking about is we're, like I'm con there's a million ways to do different things or to approach different things or show up for different things or present yourself in, in different ways. But what I'm always concerned with are what could I say is a universal truth or what do I, you know, what, like, what can't you argue with? You know, how do human beings work? What do they respond to? What are they always going to laugh at? Why do human beings like, why does Joseph Campbell's like hero's journey? Bragging. Why, why is that? What is people always going to laugh at? Yeah, what, 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 well, what why, why did they respond to, you know, a small farm boy meets the mentor, turns down the mentor's offer, the mentor then comes back, something happens, he realizes he can never go home again, now they're off to the imaginary world from the real world. Why does it always work? Was why is there always a dip? That was Star Wars. What, what was Star Wars? Star Wars is the hero's journey of Joseph Campbell, but it's like, why does why did that start in ancient Greece and why does that continue to work now? Why did what they wrote in the Odyssey you know why does like or the uh, homer's iliad like wh why does that why does that work with human beings why do they always you know and then it becomes well you have to step out and try to break that pattern but this is a truth of how people want to digest the story how they want to laugh you know um for example like i just read recently there's a script for the original script for pretty woman was As opposed a, to the remake so, well, no, what I mean is that, so the original script, so what you saw on screen was Gary Marshall uh, and, and Disney's version of the story. Yeah, I do know this backstory a little bit. And so the original was a really like hardcore expose yeah. about like, like a, like a streetwalker on Santa Monica and Vine, basically, who gets, who's like crack addicted and like has to spend a week with this guy and not smoke crack. And she's like jonesing. And this guy, the character, male character is like. It's like it's like a American Psycho. It was like a comment on the 1980s Wall Street type, and you know how you read that script, and then say, okay, people want a happy ending. This thing would be massively successful and way more successful if we had a happy ending on it, and then we have to work backwards no and kind intended. of like re <laughs> very much pun intended, and then we have to reverse engineer this story. But but they were right. Like they had a grasp, Gary Marshall and company and Laura Ziskin and Gary Goodwin, they had a, they had a grasp on what, what was going to really speak to the heart of the majority of an audience. How did you, how do you know that? How do you know inside of you that that's that? And then also, you know, how does a filmmaker completely stray from that? Like if you're John Waters and what just we, what, I'm present sorry. something that people just absolutely do not want. I'm to. asking this literally. Yeah. What what is this what is what are we comparing this? What's the point of this? Well, the point of this is there's a human truth. There are things that like, you know, for example, like like I was saying, you know, sleeping it goes back to like sleeping, you know, walking someone in the car, opening the door yeah. that for me um as a as a you know, I don't know, as a yang, let's call it that. As a yang, like that's what I'm comfortable doing. And so when I talk about litmus test, I was find trying to find someone who was going to be complementary right. to that way of me showing up. Someone that would be, you know, either appreciative or um, or like that, or be attracted to a guy who does those things. And if somebody isn't, that's okay. Then you don't have to. We don't have to be together. But I want to show up that way because, you know, chasing, you know, chasing makes me feel good. Chasing makes me fall in love. Yeah. 
I don't fall in love when somebody Nietzsche chases me. Is that a start? <laughs> Chasing start makes like, you fall in love. Yeah, get away from everybody. I want to I wanna tell you something that I, I haven't articulated to myself yet, and I fear it'll take about 60 seconds. And I feel like I need to let you know that so it doesn't sound like it's going on too long. Oh, yeah. Okay, spotlight. So I, bigger than the opening the car door for the girl, yeah. um, or the guy, is what happens if I do or don't do that? And I don't mean I don't mean the penalty. I mean literally, I am we a person is their best self when they're present, right? Mm -hmm. It's just we could respond, we could react, we're listening, we care. I have a I, I I think one of my strengths as a performer is that ability to be present. However, I have to strip everything else away in order to be there. And sometimes those things are those necessary million ways to skin a cat things that I, I haven't been able to develop really well yet. Point being, if I, the car door is just an example. Another great example of it is I grew up, I never kissed a girl until I was 17, right? Um, that may not sound that crazy, but when kids are getting blown at 14, I'm the odd duck out. You know what I mean? So I remember I bought a book on how to kiss because I didn't know at this point, I can't figure out a camp. I'm fucking driving already. Sure. So I didn't know, do I go top lip on top lip and bottom on bottom? Or do you do you stagger and do every other? I bought this book that it turned out being a how to eat pussy. I, I you know, I didn't need this yet. <laughs> but I, I was so scared of it. And I was dating this girl. Shout out to Sarah. We'll put her Instagram handle up here. Date, like we went to prom. We both knew we liked each other. We were in class together. It was months yeah. We uh, after prom we slept at somebody's house in a chair and I didn't even kiss I was terrified of kissing. Right. So here's my identity. If you don't kiss a girl, you're a fucking loser bitch. That's not real. It's but that's what my that's what I projected. Sure. I have more to that, but I want to hear your your conf No, I, I no I'm, I'm hearing that voice and and I guess it's like putting that voice like I wow. Jesus, I mean, uh, that was aggressive. Could you just maybe take it down a this notch? This is the problem. You're getting a, no, I'm kidding. I know, man. I'm kidding. No, I mean, that voice, but the thing is, is like, that voice is okay. This is the voice inside of you of nature. Let me, let me, Do you understand? I, and it's I, manifesting itself in that particular timber, you know, or, or but but it's timber like, works. you know, I, I think, um, but the other side of it is like, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, you That's know, only the first half. Yeah. yeah. I was wrong. I, just, I, just didn't, I was hearing you judging yourself and I just oh, wanted to say, no, that's, it's that's, okay. That's kind to of you. It's, yeah, no. It's, it, it's more of wanting perspective to figure something out that exists. But I appreciate that and thank you. Because it drove you to say, you know what? I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to get good at it and I care about this. And But how do I get good at it? Right? The, the issue is how can I remain honest and present while still acknowledging this thing that by design you're not supposed to say. For example, and it's it's case by case, but genuinely speaking, I'm a big believer in everything that happened in the movie Hitch. And you go in 90% of the way, you let her decide if it's the case, but you you know, but you can't say, well, "Hey, I'm going do you mind if I kiss you?" No, I hate I mean, I know that's the thing you're supposed to do now but, and but Snow he, White's getting canceled because he didn't get consent. No, Snow White's not getting canceled. The fucking the prince. jerk off prince. But the prince is like the most chivalrous. Like it's a it's the All perspective. It, but it is like the ultimate like this is how you behave like but be, that's the be, point. A, be a great chivalrous guy you know he's going to take but, care of uh, her and be a guys, great guy to some her. guys don't want to slay a dragon some guys want to take the girl and be like let's run away from the dragon and watch a movie i'll get the door for you well, yeah, i know you're a dragon slayer whether you like it or not well, i always aspired to be one and you became one but that's what i get back to the 1980s i aspired to be those guys i aspired to be rambo and rocky and he-man and conan and Commando. I aspired, aspired to be Conan. Conan O'Brien. Yeah. <laughs> Who isn't a dragon slayer. You're, you're two inches shorter. Yeah. You need to be 6'5", I think. I'm, I'm worried that I'm, that I'm leaning into talking about this too much, but I still want to tell you this. And I'm having such a good time. So I'm hoping you're having at least a good enough I'm time. I'm having a blast. Yeah. I love this. Yeah. So I figured something out a, f a few years ago. I'm, I'm with Betty. I love you. The most beautiful girl I've ever been. I put her Instagram handle up here. But I went on dates. Okay. Sure. And I... I I used to, I used to avoid, I, I don't mean like I didn't seek, I would avoid, I was I, at prom when girls would ask me to slow dance, I would set, not prom, excuse me, bar mitzvahs, uh -huh. when girls <laughs> yeah. would ask me to slow dance, I would say so many times, my mom's picking me up and so they didn't think I was lying, I would go outside for 10 minutes and I, where is she? 
and then I would go back in. I was terrified. And, Interesting. And I, I bring this up. I used to bring this up and I feel like insecure because Betty and blah, but who gives a shit? It's my life and it's real. And I haven't talked about this in a while, but there's, I remember I, I used to, having a three-way was always like living in New York. I, I don't want to have to do it, but I wish I had gotten it out of my system. I wish I could remember <laughs> having two girls sucking my dick. But how do you have a three-way? Well, I had a couple of opportunities and I literally ran from them. Uh -huh. The point I'm getting is I was so scared and I realized I'm not scared of the girl. I'm scared of I'm not going to be able to say I can't kiss you on a first date. I have to wait for the second one. Mm. I figured out how to do it. And, yeah. and the point being, I, I'm lying. If, if I go in to kiss you, which I will, but we'll figure it out when the episode's over. Sure. No, well, I mean, you're going to lean in 90%. You're going to see if I'm there and then... We're not going to ask for consent. There's going to be physical implied consent. Implied cons exactly. Exa it, you know there's whether a, it's there or not. There's a fraternity. Of course I know. I'm not going to come after you afterwards with like, a, oh, he did. Like, ah, listen, I'm in your apartment. You, you came know, 10%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And no, I, I know. pun not intended. Oh, thanks. Because yeah. you'll come 100%, my friend. <laughs> so uh, uh, I knew the game when I got here. Did you? I mean. Well, shout out to David Sullivan, by the way. That was our connection. Yeah, David. Yeah, he was my great. acting coach, and he's helped yeah, yeah, to do yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but what I, uh, it was that uh, I'm now nervous. So I, what I figured out was um, the move for me was always taking a girl to a movie because I like movies, right? Yeah. But you can't talk in a movie. R yeah, right. Sure, uh, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. So yeah. that's my litmus test. If Correct. she's talking, I'm not getting her car door. Yep. Excuse me. Just threw up. But what uh, uh, the movie is uh, in my head, if she's thinking, and this is uh, this isn't right, but here's what's happening. Um, logically, I know this isn't the case, but I'm a kid, yeah. so here's what's happening. She's thinking if this dork doesn't kiss me before the fucking credits, he's got a little dick. That's what she's thinking. Uh -huh. So I'm like, I gotta kiss this girl, but also I can't. <laughs> I like that you. He, that's her voice. It's like the most masculine voice. <laughs> If this dude doesn't kiss me by the fucking <laughs> piece of shit, he's gonna fucking tiny dick. So I'm I, not I present anymore. Yeah, because all I'm thinking you're, about you're always on a date with Charles Bronson. Like, you have an inner Charles Bronson. And I see me. Like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But now um, uh, it's a lose lose. I kiss her and I don't want to. I don't kiss her and I got a little dick. Which, unlike Howard Stern, mm -hmm. I could confidently say it's a great dick. So what I figured out, <laughs> what I do is. You just lost male listeners for sure with that comment. Most of my audience is just beautiful women. Well, I don't have many guy audience yeah, members. Yeah. Forget it then. So uh, what I what I would do is I would have to find shtick, and this is how we survive. As a as a comedian, you find ways of making things funny. So they take their shoes off and wash their hands when they enter, and he's not too much. Yeah. So I would say, hey, listen, um, I don't kiss on a first date, and maybe they'll say okay if they say why. I could say because. I, I, if you kiss me back, I, I think it takes similar to you getting up and leaving in the middle of the podcast. It would take a lot. Chances are most people would just stay and just never come back. Yeah. So my thoughts are if I kiss you, you, I don't know if you want to kiss me or you're just being nice. <clears throat> so it's, a, it, there's no point of it. Well, I, I you know, okay. I, I, I've never kissed a girl where she went like this. I would, I don't know what I would do. Well, then you would go, Okay. That's, I'm not, well, you know, for, I mean, everybody can see you, but for the people listening, like I you, pulled just, away. you just had like a repulsion look on your face and pulled away. Somebody does that. Then you're like, all right, well, I had a wonderful time but if I knew and I'm going to go get back in the car because yeah. you look like you're disgusted right now. Hello? Betty? Is that UPS? Um, you know what? I'll get it. Okay. I was being chivalrous. You're going to get the door? <laughs> the subject matter we're talking about, I kind of want to have you upstairs. Yeah, don't come down here, Betty. Whatever you do, don't come down here. Okay. Betty, will you say, oh my gosh, are these flowers? Thank you. Oh my gosh, are these flowers? Thank you. They're from Joe. <laughs> I would never do that, by the way. What, get somebody else's girl's flowers? Never. I, could, I know. No. Um... Betty, we go upstairs. I love you, but we go upstairs. I'm feeling insecure. Okay, she. I know she's gonna. You're gonna listen, but you know, I'm, it's guys. So, what I'm making up with other girls? Go on, bro. What were we talking about? About how how to.
Okay. Oh, the, the, the voice. Yeah. So I could say, I could, confi- I could be confident in my insecurity as opposed to hiding it and say, listen, I don't want to kiss you because I don't know if, if you kiss me back, I don't know if you're just being nice. So does, and, it, does that matter? Yes. Okay. Because then, then we're on date two and I haven't learned anything. But how many times have you heard a story about a guy that a woman initially did not see her with, see herself with? Betty. Like, no, that's not my type. No, 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 no. But they're won over by the personality, by the fun, by that guy or whatever it is, success, whatever it all is, and they come around. It could happen, but right? I, I would rather it be, if, a, if I knew. Or she, you, it's the kiss where it's like, wow. There's chemistry there or whatever. Wouldn't you be open to that? A hundred percent. It's just, that's a, that's a, I feel that is a challenge. So my version of that is if I knew that a girl, if I went in to kiss a girl who wasn't interested, if I knew she would go like this, if I knew you would get up and leave, I wouldn't worry and have to fill in blanks. Uh Aha. So you're giving. People are liars. You're giving her more of an opportunity to get to know you before going in for yes. the kiss. And it's not that uh-huh. it's not that morally superior, although there is a want a mutual respect to that, uh-huh. but the truth is you might not know yet. I definitely don't know. I don't want to feel obligated because of any minimal trauma I feel because I didn't get blown early enough. So what I'm going to say is just be honest and say, "Listen, I don't kiss on a first date." And if I'm not interested, by the way, I don't say anything uh-huh. or I say this isn't. Yeah. But if I am interested in a second date, I say, listen, I'm going to walk you to the door, but I get a little uncomfortable because I'm supposed to kiss. So so I don't feel that way. I just want to let you know I don't kiss on, on a first date. I'll probably give you an awkward hug or do a bit that is too much. Right. But I'm going to ask you out again. And if you don't want to go out with me, that's 100 percent fine. I have no ego about this. Mm-hmm. But if you do want to go out with me, I want to let you know that I'm going to kiss you goodnight. And if you're fine with that. Let's do it. And then I would fall down the stairs to get a laugh or whatever. Got it. All right. Well, that's, I mean, I guess it's like, you know, it's, I guess it's, it's individual for everybody, right? I mean, it's, it's, that's your survival mechanism. Well, that's your presentation, right? Like the birds on David Attenborough shows that the, bir- the, again. the birds that do the big, I don't know. It. They do these, the birds will create little stages and they'll pick the stage and set a stage oh. to invite that. Then when the female shows up, the male goes into once again the maid. He'll go into his dance mm. and then boom, like pop these plumes and do this dance to try to show that's their way of attracting oh, you know, the female. Do you understand? So you have. Yeah, I, you're gonna. I'm gonna fall down the stairs. I'm gonna do something funny. I'm gonna whatever. And and you're com- that's my you're, dance. You're comfortable. You need a little more runway to unleash your presentation because it's it's kind of like you know it's it's a it's not a it's not a hey appetizer appetizer dinner dessert you're unleashing like a 31 course tasting meal over the course of two sessions it's not because i'm a chef it's because if i don't give them 31 meals i won't be present (laughs) you know like like my jokes and my shtick isn't because i want to show you look how good i am it's because otherwise i'm not going to be able to go on a date with you I think you're not giving yourself enough credit. I uh, I, once again, I'm like your, I'm like your, your, your you're hitch my or your whatever. Yeah, I'm your champion. I'm like, dude, come on, you, you know. But it were it's, but, but I am now. I literally have a career off of this now. Like I am mm-hmm. so comfortable. In, I, there's a lot of misses that happen, right? But I'm, I'm always able to be like. I, the same way I said, are we okay? Are you okay? like, I want to give you an out. And it's not because I'm, it's not just because I want to be nice to you. It's because yeah. I want to be able to be here and not worry that you don't want to be here. Because what I have mm-hmm. learned is, unfortunately, because of these rules, people, people don't often don't know how they feel. And even more than that, they don't feel comfortable expressing it. So I have to almost mm-hmm. say, hey, listen, if you don't want to kiss me, you, this doesn't have to be a, we don't have to make a meal out of this. That's totally fine. Right. But if you don't say that a lot of times, they'll be like, uh, should I, I don't, uh, I don't know if he. Well, and that's the thing is before the, you know, I guess like you know, the age of, of consent or where you, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't mean that. What I mean is like, you know, needing like verbal consent and or written consent prior to a male kissing a female or or anybody kissing anybody else so that somebody doesn't come back and have buyer's remorse and say, Hey, you did, you know what I mean? Like, like, and I'm not saying that, like, I really want There's no sort of forcing going on in this scenario. This is like, we had a wonderful date. I'm walking you to the door. Now I'm going to lean in, you know, um, that used to be 
you know, that was the basis for many romantic moments was in that like, oh, is the electricity going to happen? Is it going to be reciprocated? I, I, I want I want to. I'm being defensive, but I want to correct that mm -hmm. because it's not about consent in that way because it's the mm -hmm. same thing when I meet you or mm -hmm. a friend. It's about growing up and not know. I, I never was bullied, uh, but mm -hmm. I didn't have friends and I didn't know it until I got older. I didn't realize like I would ask people to hang out and come over and they would say I'm busy and I would ask them every week for years and I would never pick up on it. So oh. it's, it's, it's about uh -huh. me not knowing what somebody else is thinking and uh -huh. me feeling the need to condition, to train, to give permission to you to say to me, Rick, listen, this isn't what I signed up for. I right. don't really like this. I'm going to get out of here, which is kind. When Bill kicked me out of that basketball game, yeah. I show, I wrote this thing. I Actually, I might put it up here. I would love to send it to you even. Uh -huh. It's short. I, I wrote this thing. I was diagnosed with something that made me come into awareness. Uh, uh, this, uh, well, I said diagnosis sounds dark. I, it's, I'm public about it. I, I was diagnosed with autism as an adult. And it opened up so many things to me. Hmm. And getting kicked out of this basketball game was the, my inciting incident to go and getting tested. Something I always thought, but who cares? Blah, blah, blah. I don't need to get into it. The point is, Bill sent me this email and I wrote this. I was going out to pitch this show about this. And incidentally, I booked a show about autism and I wasn't allowed to go out with it. But the sh I, I made this presentation for it, which was a um, guy who's the best basketball player in the world and everyone loves, finds out that he's annoying. Nobody wants to be around him. And blah 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 mm -hmm. and i uh joel McHale plays um bill funny and hey rick can i talk to you for a second um uh, uh, i know you think you're the best basketball player out here thank you so much you know just like completely missing on the cues and joel's script was bill's email it was just like almost word for word this email yeah and people said to me because i showed it i mean i'm filming something on it. i asked bill's yeah. permission yeah wow that's like the email that must have felt so bad that's so rough not that bill was mean it's just these things and I read it and it hurt my feelings, but I remember crying thinking this is, if everybody was this kind to me, if the people that told Bill, I don't like playing with Rick, instead told me, right. I would have been able to at least make a choice to play differently. I understand that, but all too often, people don't want to get into conflict. And they, I've learned- they, they don't want to do that. They'd rather just ghost you and have you have no idea why rather than rather than have to say- I know. This is why. You know, it's like whatever the movies are where guys go backwards in time to find their ex-girlfriends and say, what was it about me? Ghost Why did you past. break up with me? You know, and, and then they're, they're going to get these like hardcore answers. You know, what I hear in you is that you have a willingness to, you have a willingness to change. You have a willingness to grow. You want to be better, you know, I'm and, gonna cry. but also on the other side of that, there is this like instinct in you you want to go after what you want. Mm -hmm. You want to do that, um, but you also like really, you know, respect and and what that requires are people who are comfortable with telling you what they think at all times or telling you how they feel at all times. And and you want people that are responsible enough to say, "Hey, man, you're pretty crazy out there." But people haven't. Been people don't trained. want to do that. Well, I don't think it's that they don't necessarily want to do it. Everyone has their own things. I don't know if everybody, I do know that most people. It takes a special person to do that. And what yeah. you know, but you know what it could do? It could, it could be un unlocked in anyone. And I feel that I need it. Right. So by, by telling somebody, hey, listen, I'm not going to kiss you tonight. By saying that it's, it's, I feel accidentally it's disarming to let them say, hey, by the way, you could kiss me or thank you or whatever, or okay, weirdo. <laughs> You know, it forces an honest response because it's an honest presentation. Well, I think you show up the way that you show up because, you know, like, for example, like you just said, like you, you, you are accustomed to holding the door open and driving on a first date. No, no, no. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying, I'm saying if I, I'm not the first date and the 30th date are the same. I don't want to open the car door for you on the first date to make you see that I'm a good guy when I'm not a door open kind of guy, but I am mm -hmm. a good guy and I feel like it's manipulative. So what I, the trick that I found and I'm still navigating. But, but it's manipulative for you, but not to say that it can't come from a genuine place in somebody else that they are genuinely but I don't believe it. trying I just, to protect. I just can't connect to a girl wanting me to get the door for her. And I believe me, I ask and, and some say I like it. Mm -hmm. Most say no. Do you make the girl pay on first dates? No. And you know what I do? Okay, so what's the difference? Here's the difference. 
and and uh and it's almost here's me conceding your point by explaining the difference very honestly i want to pay i don't want to get the door for you but what are you showing them in paying for it is, I, isn't that manipulative I, by your definition I could, of I could make I could make something up. I feel like you don't know me. I could fucking make something up great. And, and that's not the point. <laughs> here's what it is. Uh-huh. I could give you here. Uh, here's the deal is what I'm saying. Here's what it is. It makes me feel good to to treat you. Uh-huh. If, if you if, if, uh, if you came over and before I had coffee here, if we went to go walk to a coffee place first, right. I, I would want to buy the coffee. It makes me feel good to... It just makes me feel good. Well, you're meeting somebody for the first time. You're going to pick up the first one. That's building a relationship. You're, or, you're, or you're being a good host when I come over and you offer me something to drink. That's good manners. That's being a good host. And, but on a date, by your definition of manipulative, isn't that being manipulative? The reason it's manipulative to me, and there's no right or wrong. I'm just telling you my truth. I'll tell you what. Go ahead, because I'll tell you what I think deep down inside maybe it's I'm, coming I'm, from. I'm open to it. Absolutely. Okay. I would love to know more. But I, logically, as a human being, mm-hmm. there's I, I, men and women are different, obviously. We're not supposed to, but people pretend that they're, we're very different. But to me... This is a big argument in today's world. Well, uh, here, I, here's yeah, a 100%. Right. We're different. Yeah. Black people and white people are different. People are different. It doesn't mean that there's better or worse. It's just to not acknowledge it is ridiculous. But to force an acknowledgement, which is, I should get the door for you, which I... Hey, let's just bring it down to the, to the rawest thing. I don't want to. I don't want somebody to get my door. So it doesn't make sense to me. Well, but here's the difference. I don't I don't open the door for my buddies when we're going somewhere. I open the door for my wife. But I I, I understand and that. And I don't open the door for someone else's girlfriend. But that's your language. For a cousin. That is me opening the door for my wife to symbolize I am whatever. I'm the protector, which makes me feel good. In the same way that when I take you know, take my wife out to dinner. I am showing her, and I have found the place that we're going yeah. to go to. The I bird have, set the I stage. I have negotiated. Yeah, I'm setting this. I have found this little back table in this really cool restaurant. We're going to go there, and if things go well, like not getting ahead, but I have this other place we can go to afterwards, Where? and that's hey, kind of how turn I turn the cameras off. Where? You know, this, I'll, I'll tell you when it's. Okay. I'll tell you later okay. on. We'll bleep it. Uh, you know, and and funny, we're drinking chicory coffee because I courted my wife in New Orleans. You know, so. Um, but what I, I think, you know, for me, deep down inside, deep, 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 deep down inside, the strongest urge is to, 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 to is nature. You know, like uh-huh. I, I'm, 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 a, I'm a, you have a, a million year old Neanderthal inside you. I'm a boy and she's a girl and, 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 and I think we're falling in love here. And, and also what would that lead to a family? Yeah. You know what I mean? There are these things or a companionship, lifelong companionship. And what I'm showing her is my ability, whether it's to, I can afford to take her to McDonald's and I can, I can afford to take her to Mastro's. Wendy's. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, when they're not doing the ninety-nine cent menu, it's yes. how and how do you have a house and pay for the regular price? But I don't want to interrupt too much. Yeah, uh, you get it. Uh, you know, it's it's whatever was within my means. I am inviting her into my world to say, like, you know, I'm I'm dragging some animal home to say, look what I got for you to eat. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be able to eat tonight, or you know, I'm providing that. And and it's not to say that she can't afford to take herself out to dinner. I mean, that's not the point. I don't care about any of that. Yeah. What I care about is being in a position where I am, you know, I'm picking her up. I'm, you know, helping, you know, making sure that she gets in the car safely. Her outfit doesn't get ruined. We're in this place. And I respect. She, she's going to eat. That. She's going to have a great time. And I'm kind of like. You know, like I think it is like this primal thing in, inside of me that wants to show that I can, I can provide, yeah, or but, I could be there but, for her. But you know, in any way that she would ever need me to be there, I could be there. I really want you to be open to this. Yeah. Okay. Which is, uh, it, uh, Betty asked me today, "Do I like apples?" I've been having problems pooping. Um, <laughs> yes. Bleep out the apples part. Keep the poop. <laughs> and uh, in my in my head, I, I leave I, the apples. Take the leave the poop the, Nietzsche. the cannoli yeah uh and i i said uh, uh i know you're setting me up but i'm making a goodwill hunting joke but i uh, oh, that's I was wh- going godfather with a book of foreign yeah um godfather two as well god was godfather one i meant t-o-o but yes and i uh but i think that's why my sense of memory is pulling this which is um matt damon talking about how arbitrary going out for coffee is you might as well ask to go out for caramels 
caramels or whatever he said. Do you right. remember that? Sure. The, the point I'm making is, to me, opening the car door for a girl yeah. is the same thing as if if a, if if somebody get, if she gets a coffee and it's uh it's not it, you know it's a hot coffee but it's not it's like it's it's fine yeah. it's, we don't need anything else right. and I'll pay for it for me to be like whoa 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 wait let me put a little piece of cardboard there for you who gives a shit she doesn't need that if she needed it she would get the car that's that's it's just it may it it feels it just feels silly why get the car door should you tie her shoes yeah but listen man i mean there's a lot of things Ooh, that was a good in one. terms of romance that are silly like i'm saying watch those birds set up this little theater for them to perform in and then do this crazy display what does that right. all mean it's romance is what you're getting at and i'm saying that like that like when you really think about it it doesn't make sense but that's the beauty of it is that it is this it's those little tiny things that make you go, especially when you've been together for a long time. Sure. You go, God, I love them. They, she done that. Remember, she, she, she got me my tea the yeah, way that yeah, I like yeah, without yeah. even asking me if I want. She's the best. Tell me if you subscribe to do this. Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. And it's just those tiny little things. And it's finding, I, I think finding balls keep, to juggle. You know, it's, it's having a fire, a campfire. And those little things keep, you know, it's, you blow, you, you, yeah, you blow the oxygen in and it, and you keep that thing going. I think it's I think it's those little things that over time are what keep you together. And it's it's like those you hear all those people like my grandfather would bring my grandmother a wild rose every day their entire life. Or every Sunday night he would always do this for my grandmother. And boy, they were in love and they were together forever. And you hear those stories and I think about that and that's what I aspire to. So to me, that's like I kind of built myself along that version that like I want to be the 80 year old guy who's still doing those. You see this little old guy still walking her to the car, make sure her dress doesn't get caught when he closes the door at 80. I just, I want to be that guy. And I love the idea yeah. of that. To me, that's like, God, you know, and I guess maybe it's me thinking ahead, but when your I'm, eyes are shining, by the way, I don't know if they're getting uh, wet. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm a hopeless romantic. So, I, you know, I, yeah, they're starting when to, I get to very honest, there. my, yeah, I get like that. I like, that. you know, but when I'm younger, there's a bit of like, zhuzh to it uh where you know i'm trying to create this like you know with my wife like i thought to myself you know what if this date this first date is the last first date i ever go on mm -hmm. what if this first date is the one that we always remember and i wanted us to have an amazing story and so i built that first date the way that I would want a romance to unfold. Mm -hmm. And whether or not it happened or we got on the first date and hated each other's guts, like, fine. But I was going to show up in that way and see what happened. And sure enough, we got married. So when people say, how did you meet or what was your first date like? There's this, like, fantastic yeah. story that we have. And I wanted that. I wanted to set that up so that we would have that. You know what I mean? And, and and it's like that was the kickoff for this thing and it worked. Now, if it would have failed, then I would have been like, oh boy, you know, I, I went there and she wasn't yeah. on board and, and, and didn't get what I was doing and or didn't like it or and that's fine. And then we go our opposite ways. But the fact is like it did and it worked and I'm so glad that I did it. You uh, have a, uh, I'll give you the credit for it, whether it was, whether it was subconscious or just coincidence that um, as a storyteller, uh, I assume that you appreciate an arc. In fact, I would argue that you need one to end uh, of uh, to start with um, being on stage where you started mm -hmm. to where you are now married. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still always is that 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 uh, that that line of when do you judge and when do you not? Yeah, and I think um, I don't know, man. I you know, which is, which is why, you know, we're talking about like, you know, leaning in for the kiss on the first date. And, um, you know, it's, it's like, you're waiting for that right moment. You're waiting for the moment in the movie that is your life, that this is the right one. This is it. You know, I, I'm going for it right here. Cause this is going to be perfect. Or we're overlooking this Vista or, you know, we've, you know, we've made it to the club after dinner because things went so well mm -hmm. and now we're here yeah. and, Level two, the, the right that. song comes on and bang, you know, and, um, you know, like I said, it's, it's all, you know, it's this story that unfolds. And, and for me, like, I don't know, there, there's so much fun and, 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 and I liked, you know, there were some dynamic things that went on during the courtship with my wife and I, and, and I, I really looking back, I'm like, oh boy, you know, like when you talk about zhuzh, it's like, I believe man, that. There, there was some zhuzh, you know, and it was really fun. Um, it was great.
there are two things on this I want to I want to uh, uh, respond with. First yeah. is I would like to opening the car door as just a variable that and anything else. I will be more conscious of considering. I bet you I would want to do it if I knew that this person wanted it. As, so well, you never know until you find out. And some, like I said, litmus test. Sometimes you find out. But that's what I was saying. That's when I do at. That's the the shtick where I do say, "Are you somebody or some version of finding? Do you like a car door open for you?" I have. I'm, my point is, I have to ask. I don't want to ask. I want to see I, how they react. I know. I know. <laughs> I want to give them enough rope to hang himself. But yeah, if, you like, if, you if like that's the center room of fear. Well, I. For, for with me, to a certain degree, yes. I mean, not not in an overpowering sense, but I w- like for You're me. A stage. I wanted to see if I could if I could make my wife blush, if I could put her in a position where she's whoa. You know you what know, I where, wanted where, to do? where there's that moment of wow, like uh, what did he just do? What, where are we right now? You know, I wanted I wanted that because it's fun. Because I also I also you know. I don't know. Like I trust myself and you know what I mean? Like I know that I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm going to take care of them, you know? And, and so what I'm doing is now I'm, I'm just, I was trying to make her heart race, you know, in, in a fun way. Um, which I think there's an unpredictability to romance that, that is, that is, you know, I, I think it's, I think it's exciting to say what Betty said earlier that you and I, uh, uh, as she, as she very sincerely said, uh, you know, we look like we could be related to connect with you, I do find us saying a very similar thing, mm-hmm. but with a different approach. You want to make her heart race. You want to make her blush. These are all things I would anybody would like to do with somebody they're courting. I understand. Yeah. But to me, it's more, I want to make her laugh. I want her to feel that she could be... Not that what you're saying contradicts this by any means, mm-hmm. but my priority is I want to make her feel that she could be brutally honest with me. Right. I want her to feel that I'm funny and I could take care of her, but I... In my world, luckily, there haven't been that many dragons that need slaying. Uh-huh. There are a lot of uncomfortable, awkward, boring situations that by having me around, we're laughing and having a good time. Right. So I'll get the door for you if you need it. But I'll tell you what else I'll do for sure. I'll make you laugh. I'll make you feel safe. I'll make you trust me. Yeah. And those things I could only offer 100%. And in order for me to be this honest person giving you that safe space, yeah. being able to be funny because I'm listening and responding, yes. I have to get out. Listen. This is who I am. This is what it is. I want you to know today, not in five months or in three years. Uh, my therapist once told me that it takes about two years before you know somebody and everything else is projections. I, I, I'm sure you could argue that. But well, yeah, no, I mean, you're meeting someone's representative on a first date. And, and for, the, for, the, for at least the first year, it's like people can stay in character for a while. I've had, I've, I've watched massive collapses in people like six months in where you're like, yeah. what? Were uh-huh. you hiding from me? I was in one. That's insane. How did you keep up that facade that long? That's wild. And oh that's that's an extreme version, but yes. I mean, but we've all, you know, like we've all met the representative and then, and then met the real person and realized they, they had a front up or were hiding all of these things, just trying to see if they could get over the goal line. So one of the splinters, which you might call one of the downsides of me not having a representative mm-hmm. is he doesn't get the door. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, I understand what you're saying. Um, I'm sorry if I'm beating this over the head, by the no, way. No, 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 no. I mean, it, no, but, but, I like but, but it. what I'm saying is that like, so I think if there's a trifecta of like protecting, nurturing, cherishing, meaning like allowing someone to feel how, how they want to feel. different than nurturing? Nurturing would be like, um, here's the food, here's the, here's the, here's the deer I dragged home. Here's the food. Here's, oh, I'm okay. providing, Perfect, you know, pr- whatever all that providing. stuff is. Yeah, yeah. Protecting would be like, like you dragons. Know, yeah, exactly. Or you know, somebody's going to break in your house. I'm the one at the door. You know, I'm the one at the top of the stairs. You know, or, do you or have a weapon things. in your bedroom? Sure. Do you are you comfortable telling me what it is? Uh, yeah, Glock twenty one forty five. And uh, is that something that you had when you were living alone? No. You got it. Do you think it's because of your wife? Well, yes. Uh, well, because I I think about this a lot now. It's whatever protection I want. Listen, you know, um, as a responsible person who has worked with firearms a lot over the years, um, you know, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And, yeah. um, you know, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how much more, I, you know, to elaborate on it than that. But yes, I, 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 I'm ready if someone comes to the house and yeah. tries to get in. 
Uh, I can't assume what exactly they're after yeah. and I need to, I need to protect the people in it. I have a right. responsibility to do that. And that's, that's my job. That's part of my job. So you were talking about the, the trifecta where you have to like, you only have so many attribute points. You can't give a 10 to everything. That's um, what I thought. Well, you yeah, that's at. what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is that like, you know, you know, I'm say I'm like, I'm pushing, you know, in my approach to, you know, door open, things like that. Um, that would fall under, let's call it protector, right? Where I think, you know, the cherishing part, which is making someone feel comfortably emotionally or comfortable enough emotionally to tell you how they feel, how they really feel right. is a really important part of, of being in a relationship or having the, you know, the yang job, if you will, I will. It, you know, and, and, yeah. and I think that like, what I'm saying is that like, there's no like, well, this is better or more yang than this approach. I'm just saying that, like, I like what you're saying and I hear what you're saying. And it's interesting to hear you coming from that perspective of like the cherishing side, which is I want her to feel safe with me. I want her to feel like however she feels is going to be OK with me. And I also want her to get to know the real me, which is weighted more for a long run. Like you can tell how good of a guy you are. You're not like that's not a setup for one night stands. You're not doing magic tricks to try to like those. I pick run up, away from three ways. Like those pickup artists were exactly to get into these situations. Now those pickup artists, their big flaw, as it turns out, was they could get girls all day long. They could attract the girl, get the girl, but once they had them, they had no idea what to do with them. And you were more concerned with. I want to be in a relationship. I want somebody there and I'm going to actually build something, a good foundation. So to me, what I'm hearing from you is like, you're more about building a really strong foundation, even though that might not mean that it's like the most explosive out of the gate. And I think that a yeah. smart woman would recognize the fact that you were taking it slow as you are a real man. You know that there's not no, there's no free lunch. There's no free lay. I'm not going to use you and I'm going to make you feel comfortable you know, in being with me. And to me, that's like, that's the recipe for, for, for a good relationship. I mean, like your, your girlfriend's so lucky. She's a lucky girl. I tell her constantly. She's a lucky girl. Well, here, I'll say it again. I'll tell you something that is, uh, uh, I was able to receive that compliment very well. Do you ever get complimented and you're like, okay, okay, okay. Even if you kind of believe it, it's like, you don't need it. When people tell you how good looking you are, I'm sure you believe them, but you're also like, I don't need this right now. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll oh, believe it. I'll you? take it. Okay. Sure. Uh, but I, I'll go like, you know. Yeah, Bleh. you have to bet. That one Bleh. I was that one made me really feel good cuz it's like you know, I, that that my mission isn't to be that and I hope I am that. But you're for real. You're you're what I'm hearing is you're 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 a real man. Like you understand what is expected of you and this is how you're showing up. And clearly, you know, clearly it worked. Thanks. You know? Cut to me saying, Betty, get upstairs. I want to talk about three ways with my new friend. <laughs> where's my, where's, <laughs> where's dinner? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, well, uh, I love you. Okay. Thank you for coming over. Thanks. Um, we didn't talk again. Like I have a list of questions. Betty help, helps with them and oh, we didn't man. get to them. Um, if we ever do this again, maybe yeah. I'll get to those questions. I also had a, I didn't tell you to bring them, so we didn't, but I have some of my 20-sided dice that I thought it might be fun at some point to trade with you. Amazing. Uh, All right. Well, had I known, I, yeah, well, I'll, bring you, I'll bring you a set of my dice that my company, I make with my company. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, oh, here it is. It's... Um, I would have brought you a Death great, saves, great, right? great set. Yeah, I'll send you one. I can send you, I can send you stuff. Yeah, I'll wear, I'll wear it on this too, but I, cool. I wanted to show you uh, some merch that I've been doing that's really cool. Yeah. So I'm big into magic, yep. um, and I started making collectible cards, and... Uh, is this for me? Um, if you want it, absolutely. I have, I have a, a, a few yeah. first. I'm actually, I think I'm sold out of those now. Um, I have first editions. And the, uh, uh, wow, it's inspired cool. by, and I've got to put this back up, but one of my favorite pieces that I have is Hulk 181. The first, first, first uh, sign of Wolverine, of course. Yes. Or, well, Logan. Logan. Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, my, um, uh, my oh, mascot, nice. My nice. mascot is a goblin, so that's me as Wolverine and the goblin as Hulk in, out of, and it's the 90, it. 1991 uh, Marvel template. Uh, I just came out with. Uh, I don't want to take this if this is not that oh, for me. If, I didn't want to. I mean, I, I will. After our conversation, feel comfortable saying if this is something you don't think is cool or want. This no, is amazing. No, no and I'll, would, I'll trade you some fun stuff. Yeah, I would. I would love that. Great. But I, I also bring it up because uh, I just had Blake. There's people who've been on, and Blake Griffin is Colossus. That one just came out. Oh really? And I'm starting to do people that 
I don't want to make it just be people who look like superheroes. Uh-huh. Um, I'm, uh, it's not out yet. Maybe I'll have the art by the time this is up. But Mark Marin is kind of like the Tony Stark of podcasting. So I'm having him as Iron Man. That works. Uh, Joel McHale wanted to be Punisher, which I would see you as. Yeah. Um, but if uh, people who are either a certain thing that I want to make him a card or there are certain people that are nerd culture yeah. and I feel you would be an awesome card if you're into it. So, and if, so Colossus, Punisher, and Wolverine are taken. Right, which those are probably your three. Those would have been a big three for me. Yeah. Um, you um, could get back to me and Hulk is taken as well. Hulk is taken. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I mean, where do we go from there? It doesn't have to be, by the way, it's, it's comic book art, but it doesn't have to be Marvel. It doesn't have to be DC. You know, it could be Dragon Ball Z for that matter. Man, I mean, you know, my dream was always to be Batman when I was a kid. Yeah? Yeah, that was, I'd love that, to make, that was my dream. Let's I, make you I always wanted to be Bruce Wayne. Uh, are you comfortable, and you know, I'm putting you on the spot here, but we've already kind of opened this. Are you comfortable with me doing a card of you as Batman? That would be amazing. Cool. I'd love it. All right. That'd Aren't those great. awesome? They're cool. Yeah. Super cool. Um, so uh, thank you for coming over. Is there anything you, you want to plug? I mean, your Instagram at least? I mean, you know, for everybody out there, uh, my film Arch Enemy, which is a superhero deconstruction, kind of a what if Superman landed on the wrong planet and became a meth addicted uh, homeless person with no powers. Uh, Arch Enemy is available on VOD and DVD everywhere. Uh, my other film, uh, uh, Shoplifters of the World, which right, is that just came out, right? Based, yeah, based on the uh, breakup of the Smiths and the subsequent holding hostage of a Denver radio station that supposedly happened back in 1987 or was rumored to maybe have happened. Um, uh, I play the radio DJ Full Metal Mickey and produce the film with my brother uh, Nick, and that is also available on VOD and will be released on DVD very soon so you can go and check those two out um in the meantime you know keep an eye out for spine of night this rotoscopic uh crazy violent fantasy animated film that i did that that just got picked up for worldwide distribution from south by southwest that'll come out sometime this year and then also i star in Zack snyder's prequel to anime prequel to um army of the dead which will come out at some point i think late late this year early next year depending on when they get the uh, the animation done which is like looking really amazing so uh and then death saves i i have a fantasy heavy metal inspired streetwear company that i have some really cool uh licensing agreements with uh different brands and uh we make all kinds of fun um cool stuff that you wouldn't mind being caught dead in at you know uh comic-con or your you know the final slayer show um so check that out at death-saves.com and from there um, I don't know. We got, I have some fun stuff that I can't announce yet that'll be coming down the pipe. So just, um, yeah, follow. follow so yeah, you have some stuff. Some stuff. You have some stuff you're working on. Fun, cool stuff. Uh, what is the Army of the Dead thing that's coming out? Uh, it's a prequel series to Army of the Dead. So it's kind of a prequel equal um, that's, that's, that we were going to film live action, but because of COVID, uh-huh. they switched to a six- episode netflix anime series which i think is going to be 3d animated uh which is like really intricate like these kind of yeah like uh, you know all the objects are you know kind of you know three-dimensional in the space and um and so they're working on that we recorded that over covid and uh and that's cool yeah which is which is it's it's really amazing i just watched his movie it's going to be a lot this is like a a lot of fun and because it's animated they can go kind of of further with with everything well uh Joe, this was awesome, man. And you inspired me to be chivalrous. I have a desk upstairs that I couldn't bring down uh, with my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Would you help me bring it down? Bring the the desk? I've got a new desk and I need to bring that aside. Would you help bring that desk down so I don't have to make me and my girlfriend do it? Um, Sure. Yeah, as long as somebody holds a chihuahua. Oh, my God. Okay, let's go. Okay, Gina. Doing great. Wait, wait, baby, we're gonna hit the thing. Wait, 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 put it down. Got him. Yep. All right. Ready? And how you doing, space wise? I'm good. You're good. Oh <laughs> my god. Doing great. Oh, bubbles. I'm sorry. Thanks for doing this. I didn't feel comfortable doing it alone with Betty. Huh? Oh. Hey, no problem. Scoot doo. Blabbity blue. Scoop D. Oh yeah. <laughs>